How was everybody's weekend? I know how Anthony's weekend was. It started with a Renaissance uh, Festival. The Renaissance Festival. Another it, one? I was very festive. No, it was the only one I've been to this year. Oh. It was Saturday. That's exactly what I think, too. Another one, but it's only once no. a year. No. Nope. Went, um, went with uh, you know my girl and uh, Dave. Uh, Eastside Dave came with his lovely uh, bride, Casey, and uh, Danny, of course, and then a couple of friends of mine. Um, and uh, oh, what a time! What a time! I, uh, we wound up getting three um, full digital videotapes. Oh, really? Thing. Yeah. Can we yeah. get some of that audio Which on I the air? I just have to sort through. I was supposed to sort through it yesterday, but had a little jam up yesterday. Oh, what happened? I'm exhausted. See, I already know what happened. I'm exhausted. But I got to make believe. We went to the Renaissance know. Fair. I had, had a great time. Yeah. Everything was hunky-dory. <laughs> I dressed up first time ever that I, I got dressed in Renaissance regalia. What do you mean first time ever? It is. Halloween parties. Oh, Halloween parties. Different. Everyone dresses up on Halloween. I, this was, you know, the, the Renaissance. And then I was walking around going, hello, fair maiden. Ugh. <laughs> Wait, where'd you go with Fez? I and mean, you guys all went with something. Isn't that a renaissance for you? Well, recently? Fez didn't uh, go. But did you go to one recently? No, we were planning this one. Medieval times. Oh, medieval oh times. we went to medieval times. Yes, that's Isn't that different. kind of like a renaissance festival? No, no. Oh, you just right. sit in your seat and eat, you know, food eat, without Eat big turkey silverware. legs. <laughs> big turkey legs. And uh, we went there and had a great time. Got got smashed. Um, videotaped it. Uh, doing dangerous things. See, after you drink at a renaissance fair... Uh, the best thing to do is grab sharp objects and hurl them <laughs> at targets you can't possibly hit <laughs> and mock other people that have like uh, weapons uh, that they aren't doing good until they get mad at you. <laughs> and then you threaten uh, the guy behind the counter that you're going to start lobbing the uh, weapons over the top of the little hut where the target's on it and uh, send it out into the highway, and he gets very upset. Are you talking about the axes? Axes. Arrows? Uh, yes, we were throwing axes okay. at targets, and I, I was pretty good. I got, I got the hang of it pretty pretty fast, but uh, there were a few guys that weren't very good at it, and uh, we got much laughter, much jocularity laughing at them uh, screwing up, and we made it known that we were laughing at them. Ha, 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 look at you. You are incompetent. You should be embarrassed to be throwing those axes... In front of the king. Who's the king? Uh, I was pretty good. I think I was... Uh, no, the king was walking around. Like, the king walks around. One, you kidnap the king, and then you could have become the king. The king's guard walks with him. Yeah. Are you can, insane? You take out the guard. He's just a kid from some college. Insane. Trying to make a, a few extra bucks uh, over the summer. That I was, <laughs> just exactly. take out the king's guard, take out the king, and take over the Renaissance Festival. Is there a hierarchy, with you? A hierarchy among those nerds? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, playing absolutely. the king, and, and like, the other guy who's playing the guard really has to kind of be nice to the guy who's really playing the king? Like, there's, yeah, there's guys that are like, you know, uh, well, I have to go do the joust. And he's like, oh, wow, he, he rides the horse. You know? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. The, and then there's lowly, you know, uh, uh, whatever they called the poor people back then. You know, and they're, and they're, oh, good day, sir, good day. They got a bowdy people as they're walking down the little trails. Paupers. Paupers. Surfs. Surfs. Yeah, oh, that's right, surfs. The surfs. God, I learned that in high school. Yeah. I can finally, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you never get to use, use that, that knowledge. Life, right, right, and right. then there's a lot of uh, fat broads that um, cinch up these uh, corsets and, and turn their fat into boobs. They try anyway. And Danny had no qualms about, as he's videotaping one of these women, he points at her belly and goes, uh, her boobs, and goes, hey, was that a bunt this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Just pushing everything. Oh, he got hammered Danny without his shirt on, wearing nothing but a chainmail halter. <laughs> oh, he looked so queer. <laughs> and uh, who else did we meet? At a beer booth. Uh, many ONA fans, by the way. Many ONA fans coming up, taking pictures with me, uh, loving the show. And um, there was a girl behind the beer booth, one of the beer booths, and she goes, I know you. 
I was on your show once. Uh oh, what did she, she do with her track. vagina? She was in. A- <laughs> what did she do with her vagina on our show? <laughs> <laughs> she certainly wasn't in there to yeah. discuss Russian history. <laughs> it, well, odd, oddly enough, that you say that, yeah, because in a way, she kind of was uh, with a Russian. Uh, okay, and another girl. She was. Um, what was her name? Miss. Misty oh, Monday. Boy. Monday. Misty Monday. Well, let me get her name right. Well, what's so she doing on our show back in the Misty day? Misty Monday. She was in Playmate of the Apes. Remember? I don't even know what I'm doing here. That was her. It wasn't her. Oh, okay. But she was one of the other girls in Playmate of the Apes. Yeah, but that, the other broad was the star. Yeah, she was. All right. But this girl, you know, she, she was caught up in uh, in that industry for a while. Right. And um, we, we gave a little, we had a little interview with her that's on uh, videotape. And I uh, got to pull some audio from that because Danny, again, starts talking about how well she's doing now working a beer booth at a Renaissance fair. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Is she a porn chick? Uh, y- she, yeah. I remember her back in the day. She was doing, like, the soft porn. Like, they didn't really get oh, yeah. any action. So yeah. it was like, why would you buy these tapes? Yeah. Because you're not made of the apes. It's either you want to see lots of flesh or really good acting. Uh-huh. The in-between stuff no one gives a crap about. You're getting another here. Oh, there's me with um my uh, gear on. That's beforehand and after. <laughs> but I, I also got a nice hat with feather plumage. Yeah. Look at your and a hairdo. sword. Yes. You fluffed out your hair, I see. Well, no, I just took my hat off. Because <laughs> I can't wear a baseball cap in the Renaissance period. Wasn't there another hat you could wear? Be uh, yeah, but I, I went around without a hat as I searched out a hat. And then I found a lovely one with nice feather plumage. Oh, looks wonderful. I hope you threw it in the garbage <laughs> on your way out. No, <laughs> no, it is all still there. Th- well, actually... Um, it's called buying the myth. We talk about it on the show all the time. You go to the, the Renaissance Festival, you buy all this stuff. You look cool while you're there. You look like you're fitting in. And then you have to walk back to your car in the parking lot looking like a... A doofus. Dude, the parking lot was no problem because other people were dressed like that. Right. What was odd Go was t- checking into the hotel. <laughs> to, complete, I swear to you, complete regalia. Sword, uh, bracers yeah. with l- knives in them. Yeah. Like, I was fully armed, but people, you know, you walk around the city with a sword and knives, and you will be arrested in a second. But if you have a, if you dress as if you are in the Renaissance period, people smile. They don't care that you have a weapon that can kill a, a crowd of people. Because they probably think you have Down Down syndrome and that no, you were at some don't. kind of summer camp. My tongue did not look <laughs> fat in what I was wearing. And uh, then we went to the bar. Yeah, up the uh, at the corner uh, o- o- over there on Seventh, uh, uh, and uh, again dressed in full regalia, walked into the bar with weapons. My hat. Yes, greetings everyone, greetings. An ale for me and my party, please. <laughs> Special endeavor. But, but, people, I brought a smile to people's faces. You know you're going crazy, right? He's losing his mind. Yeah, no, it was, He's slowly but surely going crazy. It was, it was funny. <laughs> I had fun. Oh, wait, who's that? Uh, just a young lad oh, dressed in his uh, his 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 <laughs> Renaissance outfit. I'm looking at the pictures on the website. <laughs> yes, there are some pictures available on uh, Whackbag, I believe. You see a couple you don't like, you get mad at the girl, you call her a surf lover. <laughs> 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 yes, indeed. So then, what happened? Well, um, you know the food. At yeah. the Renaissance Festival. Oh, yeah. Not the best food. Well, big turkey legs. What else do they serve? I don't know. Yes. I yes. remember going once back in the day. It was turkey it legs. Was a, a, they call it steak on a steak. There's, see, there's um, a steak strips, and they put it on a skewer, a wooden skewer, and they call it steak on a steak. <laughs> oh. Okay, then, terrific. And everything <laughs> is just doused in grease. Oh yeah, French fries and cheesy stuff and just awful stuff for you. So uh, I opted to stay away from the unhealthy food and just drank a beer, a beer, a beer, a beer an hour. Well, it was a it beer was, every fifteen minutes. A few minutes. beers. We had <laughs> right. a lot of fun. I don't know how he has such willpower. This guy <laughs> right. he stays away from the bad food. Yet he gambles a quarter million dollars and drinks alcohol. Right. <laughs> the willpower. And dr- we all need then, our vices. And then drives really fast back to Manhattan, dressed like a pirate. <laughs> no, I didn't drive. <laughs> or whatever. Uh, I did not drive. I'm not silly anymore like that. Yeah. That's for sure. But uh, the food, very bad. And, uh, of course, 
uh, my girl is a vegetarian, so it's very hard for her to find something to eat. So she was eating the French fries, and uh, she's had uh, problems with gallstones. Oh boy! Over the um, past few months, and that food set it off. So here I am at the hotel uh, here in New York City um, yesterday morning, completely feeling like crap. It's seven thirty. I think I got to sleep at two. We had been, uh, you know, we had been uh, drinking. Uh, during the night, and I was pretty hungover, and she's up going, oh, I'm getting that pain again. And I know if it starts, it's just going to get worse. So loaded up the car, uh, the truck, real quick, and drove back to uh, Long Island to uh, the uh, emergency room. And by that time, it was, she was hurting pretty bad. So they did all the tests that they do, but they did it like three months ago, and she knows that there's a problem with that and everything. And finally, after... Maybe ten hours of oh sitting, my God. and uh, uh, in in a room. But they were doing tests, and they gave her some good, you know, stuff to stop the pain. So that that was good. Uh, they decide, well, you know, something that's ah, just got to come out. That's got to come out, the gallbladder. So now uh, I sit here waiting, and um, she's uh, in the uh, hospital. Wait, they're taking her whole the, the gallbladder's coming the whole thing. And they just take they, them out. They don't take a piece of that. They're like nothing. You either take oh, it all little, or leave it. It's a little thing. What is a gall? What do you do with it? You even need it. I think it's like a, like if it, if you let a plum like just dry in the sun all day. <laughs> that's what it looks like. I think I think yeah. that's what a gallbladder looks like, and it's useless. It, it just got stones in it. Yeah, a gallbladder. Got some stones in there. A gallbladder is pretty much useless in this day and age. Yeah. So uh, last, you know, it was. Uh, the, the whole day Sunday. It's funny you say that the food there. kicked it off because uh, back in the it always day, always does. Uh, as a little family thing, we went to Kentucky Fried Chicken, and my dad like keels over in pain from the greasy food. It set off his gallbladder attack, and he had his gallbladder. Yep. Out. My sister Dawn, she had the, hers the, out. The Reverend Dawn, whatever she is, performing <laughs> weddings for people. Dawn uh, Moon. Dawn. Sun, Dawn Moon. Right. Sun Young Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> She uh, she had eaten some uh, Chinese food, and uh, I, I guess something greasy, egg rolls and stuff, yeah. and wham, had to go and have it taken out. Wait, how does grease, I don't understand how it works. Like, I don't really understand. understand. I think yeah. greasy food make, kicks your gallbladder into like high gear. Oh. It, it like, yeah, this it works. ejects it, something in there. To uh, help break down the grease or something. Yeah, the gallbladder just uh, makes weird noises, like yeah, squishy noises. And if That's, there's this is what your gallbladder does inside you. And if there's stones in there, they can block up the duct that the is supposed to come out of, and then it gets all inflamed and it hurts like hell. But it's like have, having kidney stones or any other kind of stones. If you have no gallbladder, nothing changes though. No, you just. Uh, I, I think you got to watch. You know, you can't eat crappy fatty food you know you'll have a problem digesting it oh, okay so uh you know that's the, no, no more horrible renaissance fair food <laughs> you know <laughs> vegetarian depress- eat vegetables if a vegetarian has to worry that's depressing because that's eating pretty healthy yeah when you're a vegetarian you eat fairly healthy and yep. like, if, if that's not even good enough it's like what's right. the, just eat ice cream we should all kill ourselves by the time we're 50 some people, yeah. but some people are just cursed with a bad gallbladder well that's, that's what it is our whole family every single one of them just as bad gallbladder the mother the father the whole aunt to this one yeah bad gallbladders are you are they they just piling them up in a jar. That's it, saving them. <laughs> Big gallbladder jar. Put it in the jar. The family gallbladder no. jar. <laughs> Plop. There's some more dried than others. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, that was uh, that was all day Sunday, just sitting there, and nothing uh, more entertaining than sitting in an emergency room, hungover, uh, hungover, no no uh, and, comfortable bed, and just nothing watching. To sleep on. Watching people. Since you got to go for some uh, test uh, where they give you some kind of radioactive stuff and then you lay under a machine and it scans you oh, yeah. for two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. As I tried to sleep in a chair that I recall from third grade being in my desk. <laughs> and I had a couple of blankets over me and was curled up 
to the point where I think when I stood up, they rushed me into surgery to fix my scoliosis they thought I had. <laughs> I was hunched over. I said, no, no, I, I was sleeping in a chair. How many times did the doctor try to wheel you away thinking you were the problem? Oh. Because you were hung over and not looking I'm good. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping there. Doc, here he is. Here he is. They're rolling you down the hallway. We finally got a room, so I got, I got to watch Patton. I watched Patton. Yeah. And then... Uh, and I'm, I'm sitting there at about 11 o'clock a.m. thinking, there's no way we could still be here by like 7. Mm -hmm. I, I pushed it. I was like, 7? I'll finally be home laying in bed. And then like 7.10 was there, and I'm like, oh, was I wrong? Oh, was I wrong? So then the doctor and this, the surgeon and stuff come over to consult and everything. We speak to them, and he goes, well, we're going to you know, admit you, and uh, uh, we'll do this tomorrow. You know, first, we'll do a sonogram, make sure everything's... Uh, you know, it's the last phase of all the tests. And then uh, we'll go in and yank that out. Yeah. do it to laparoscopic, laparoscopic surgery. Uh-oh. These days. That means they go into something. No, no. It means they don't cut. They don't make a big cut. Yeah, they don't make a cut, so they have to go in somehow. No, they go in, but they go in with very small instruments. Oh. So it doesn't leave scars. But how do they get it out, then? How do they get the color out? They squeeze it they through. They yank the little, it out. They yank it out through the tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah, very tiny, almost little incision. Yeah. Uh, and, and they just... <laughs> and they go in with a camera and little instruments that snip and do things. Do and, they, then, and, then, and then they take it out. It's but amazing. Wait, but if it's, if it's like a plum thing, how do they stick? Oh, but it's soft. It's like a rat going under a door. Oh, ew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to operate on people. <laughs> they, oh, I know. It's they amazing. Get a, they get a hold of it with tweezers and pull it out. That place is something. I'm, I won't mention it or something, but unbelievable new, new technology. I'm amazed. You go into these uh, emergency rooms, and all of a sudden I was like, I thought that window, I thought the whole, the whole front of it is glass and, and, uh, of, of everyone's room, and the door is glass and everything. It's like, not much privacy in, in this room. And then you flip a switch, whew, the whole window turns white. Yeah. It's like Star Trek. Nice. It's like, whew. They all electrical. They, they finally figured used, it out. They finally used the bathroom technology for something useful. Yeah. You go into trendy like yeah. restaurants and they have that technology. And I was thinking to myself, when are they going to use this for something for useful? Something good. Right. And then the uh, if you have to get an x-ray, they don't have to drag you up to x-ray. Guy comes around with the machine itself. Goes from one room to the other. X-raying people. Like, they really got this down. Yeah. They figure this crap out. And, uh, well, uh, uh, finally... With uh, this whole thing, I have not slept uh, in a while. Uh, I actually crapped out on her bed in her room. She finally got a room and uh, f like fell asleep on the bed. And uh, they, I guess they left me. They shut the curtain and left me in there. They were pretty cool about it. And um, I woke up with no alarm, luckily, at 4.30 and just wow. whizzed right here. And if you check those pictures or that you looked at earlier, Iraq. The ones before I got dressed in my Renaissance gear, you will find me wearing this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you were wearing Saturday. We're up to Monday, this. man. No, I was wearing this. Um, wait, yes, Saturday. Saturday. But here's the thing. Please, did you change your underwear? I changed out of it. Not that we care, but I, I, I changed out of it to put on my Renaissance gear, so I wasn't wearing this. Are you long free at balling all. right now? No, oh. I, I, um, I had my Renaissance uh, gear on. Which would have looked very silly. I, I was thanking God that I did bring um, clothing and didn't get dressed in my other Renaissance gear before I went because I would have looked silly sitting in the emer emergency room with Renaissance wear on. It would have put me into psych, I believe. He yeah. thinks he's a knight. Oh, here's the Alzheimer's patient. <laughs> <laughs> I hear they go into the belly button. Huh? Yeah. They go in and through the the belly button. What are they, no? what are they aliens? I think they untie the belly button, get in there, untie it. Yeah, and then they uh, tie no, it back up. There's and, no uh, untying a <laughs> belly button. It's <laughs> called laparoscopic surgery. The doctor's yeah. gonna put his big toe on the belly button. All right, yeah. put your thumb here. Hold yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> they tie it back up and they push it back in. Uh. So All right. How so, long are you out of commission for when you get your thing? It's not, the surgery is an hour, about an hour, an hour and a half, and then uh, they hold you for one day to make sure you know everything's fine, and then you go home. Okay. And then you're back to rocking and rolling, right? Yeah. So you'll be leaving the show. Uh, yeah, yeah. Pretty much after this, or if uh, sooner, if I get any call, because uh, they were going to do the uh, sonogram this morning at some point, and then uh, surgery. And of course, I got to be there. I'm not like a, I'm not an idiot. Yeah. I'm gonna sit here doing a. a 
S's and giggles show while my girl <laughs> is uh, having surgery. All right. You're a better boyfriend than I am, then. Why? What would you do? <laughs> Just like, good, I, I, Godspeed. Even, even, but even if I wasn't like on doing a show, even if it was like a Saturday and shit, he had surgery, I'd probably be like, baby, call me as soon as you're done. Oh, <laughs> God. God. You, you, don't want her, you don't want her opening her eyes in recovery, and the first person she sees is you, Jimmy. No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to see me. No. If I woke up from surgery, I'd want to see doctors. <laughs> Let's have my clockwork orange. You just open your eyes and there's like five smart looking people. <laughs> I wouldn't want to see my fat head over her. <laughs> Arguing? Were you, you flirting with the male point. nurse? <laughs> <laughs> I was making sure there were none of them on the floor, who <laughs> holding the pillow. <laughs> fat guy in blue scrubs and a creepy beard. Can I have an extra pillow, please? Yes. Just, just walk in the hallways with a big blue pillow. <laughs> I was, you see him at night, right. like at two in the morning, just yeah. creepily walking the halls with a blue pillow. He has a bumper sticker on him that says "The Heaven Express." <laughs> <laughs> uh, we gotta take a break, but that's the deal. Uh, so, uh, Ant's gonna be leaving the show sometime this morning yeah maybe we'll all just leave the show sometime this morning i uh first of all we will not be taking awful gallbladder surgery stories you dumb f's no they're just like i just had my gallbladder out that's fine but I then it's always going to turn into th these are the what i call the club soda kenny calls well it's uh you know routine surgery but things happen well pete and buffalo uh got gallbladder taken out you have awful dumps afterwards <laughs> Well, wonderful. So your chick's going to have forward awful, to that. awful dumps. <laughs> well, was, well, I never said if she did or didn't now. <laughs> she eats a lot of broccoli. You know how I know mine does? Because while I was in the shower, she's on the bowl the other day in, in San Francisco. You've reached that point it in the relationship. Awful. It was odd. I got out and I caught her. I'm like, were you eating matches? It's all like sulfur in here. What's the matter with you? Wow, she must have uh, had to go. Oh, gosh. She ran, I, was, I was in the shower and I didn't even know she snuck in there. Yeah. And the next thing you know, I come out of my shower and ready to enjoy the steamy bathroom. Yeah. And I realize that she has come in and committed a, an atrocity. And in the steam, it's even worse. It's awful. It just carries it. Women are so strange, man. Like, when you live with a girl, you'll just close the door and do what you have to do. I don't know when my chick goes to the bathroom. I have no idea. Like, she <laughs> schedules it around the time I'm out of the apartment, I guess. Or gets up, maybe sets the alarm in the middle of the night. I don't know what she does, but I've, I've never seen her go. Wow, that's good. And I don't mean actually go, but I never, I've never seen the door close while I'm while I'm in the apartment. I don't know when she goes. No clue. That's good. And, and, and not one fart. The girls got to keep up that whole illusion. But why can't guys do that? Because we're disgusting guys. Like my chick hasn't let one fart go in almost yeah. three years. Wow, that's nice. She probably has, but you didn't good know. Her. Like, she's probably really good at blaming other things. <laughs> like she probably will. Put, like she always make sure that you're walking by a, a garbage, like a big. Uh, yeah, they, she'll probably there drop you go. one there and go, "Oh my god, this oh, garbage is garbage awful." Stinks. That's what I mean. They they could figure all that out. The we entire can. drive down to Atlantic City, yeah. you can just keep blasting them. She blame her, it on Jersey. Her stomach's <laughs> rumbling, and she can't wait to hit exit thirteen A. I let her rip. All right, so why don't we take a quick break and we'll continue. Uh, so we'll blow off the gallbladder stories for you. Uh, yeah, Hang I don't need to hear any more about it. I, I've heard enough about the gallbladder. Yeah. So let's go to Scott in New Jersey. Scott, what's up? Hey, Anthony, I was wondering, is it with, that, with your alpha, was that the sword of the gay? Uh, no, I was not wielding the sword of the gay. <laughs> <laughs> the sword of the gay. That made me laugh all weekend. <laughs> no, I had a uh, rapier. I had my rapier. Did you? Yes, of course I did. We called it the sword of the gay on Friday, though. And then uh, here's here's uh, so, so, there's a couple of geniuses uh, working the Renaissance Fair. When you walk in and you have a sword, yeah, uh, they take a little black zip strip uh, that, like they had in the olden days, and uh, zip strip your sword into your your leather sheath, your scabbard, your sword holder. You know your what? Your 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 sheath. No, what your was scabbard. Your your sword holder thing, you know the leather thing that the Why sword goes in. Why would you just call it the sword holding thing? Why because do you have to use the, like the a be, scabbard? Because it, a scabbard also holds a, a rifle. <laughs> it's just the leather, you know. It's the the rifle holding thing. A holding thing. Why do you have to okay, know the holster, names of things? It's a all holster the time. for a sword. Yeah, how about a sword holder? A sword holster. Not a scabbard. And they they zip strip your sword to that holster thingy yeah. so you can't pull it out and and engage in uh battle with people there they don't want swords coming out and uh you know poking someone well the guy does it to mine but just wraps it around the sword 
So I walk in and go, I don't think he, and I pull, and it comes right out. <laughs> so now you could have done damage. I could the, have just. The sword of gay. Lopped some heads. I wasn't carrying the sword of the gay. It's known as the sword of gay, though. I was not Sorry. wielding that. No one's going to remember rapier. They're going to remember sword of the gay. <laughs> they do not. I I didn't even see anyone else wielding the sword. Well, maybe a couple of people were wielding the sword of gay. Oh. A hole. <laughs> All right. We got Jennifer in New York. Uh, Jennifer. Yeah. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, I just wanted to say I'm getting bored of the Renaissance conversation. You guys are boring me in my car. I'm falling asleep. I, then turn hey. on Scott and Todd, you bitch. Hey, you, you, you stupid C word. We, we, we spent one break now. on it. Shut up, and your, your name sucks. You your name, Jennifer, high. sucks. Hey. It sucks. Shut up. Go away, then. <laughs> Dead. Entertain me. Shut up. Jennifer. I don't want to entertain you. Stop listening. How about you entertain us? Hate you. Turn up your radio. Have a wonderful day. Turn Jennifer. Up your, Jennifer. Drive into a pole. Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> don't Jennifer. laugh. Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer. What? I want you to do something that you should do when the show sucks. Turn up your radio right now. Turn up your radio right now. I want to hear radio. You want to hear my radio? Yeah, I want to hear radio. Go ahead. Turn it up. Turn up your radio. Oh, All right. Now. now I want you to I want you to change the channel live on our show. Now change it to something else right now. Go ahead. All right. Jennifer. Jennifer. I did. It's on XM30. Okay. What's 30? What's 30? What's that? No, no you're, you're still, still listening. Still listening to us. You lying twat. bitch. You lying sack of crap bitch. Go away. Go kill yourself. Drive into a pole. Drive into a pole. Do everyone a favor. Jennifer. What an awful name. Oh, what an awful name that is. Why? 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 What? Why is it awful? <laughs> Short memory. <laughs> We've talked about the Renaissance. Enough of her. We talked about the Renaissance Festival that you went to for uh, maybe two minutes during oh, this break, God. and for about ten minutes to start the show, maybe fifteen. Minutes I, to start the show. I don't care. Well, I go, what, what do you want to talk about, dummy? All right. What does she want to talk about? Her, her her pals at the office. Shut up. What what? Who's D you took in last night? Ugh. Give, uh, give my pal Anthony a break today. He's wearing the same clothes from Saturday. I've had it. <laughs> I'm going to melt down. <laughs> All right, Merv Griffin. So you got the Jeopardy. He did the Wheel of Fortune. He uh, he was the uh, uh, legendary talk show host. And he sang, I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> this record sold three million copies, everybody. Three million copies in 49. One evening I was there when I heard a showman shouting underneath the flare. I got a lovely bunch of coconut. And Merv would like two right on his chin. <laughs> <laughs> big one, small one, some as big as red. Oh. Twist up like a wrist, that's what the showman said. Yeah, this is a little different thinking Merv wrote it. Coconut. 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 make me rich. Who would, who would buy this? Three million people in 1949. Sing a roly a pitch. Sing a roly a penny a pitch. He likes this. Okay, terrific. Boring. Boring. Turn it off. Turn it off. Obviously, we haven't stolen the music from the Negro yet. <laughs> do not want this one <laughs> under their bills of credit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you knocked it off there, yeah. You turned it off. But that's an excellent point. This is what white people were doing before we had the good sense to steal jazz and soul. Exactly. And mix blues. it together. Before make we were some brave enough to go, on, to go to the other side of town and see what was going see on. See what's going on in those clubs. Yeah. This is what white people came up with on our own. Our only poly thing of coconuts. I've what? got a lovely bunch of coconuts. These really are idiots. Let's go to Jennifer in oh. Jersey. Jennifer, what's up? Hey, not all Jennifers are bad, Anthony. Yeah. Yeah, prove that you're a good Jennifer. Yeah, go ahead, good Jennifer. Hey. Let's go. Let's get one. That's what we should do today. Get one good Jennifer. One good Jennifer. So you can finally, like, relax with the name, Anthony. Tell me tell me how why you're good. I have, I have a great joke for you. 
what is hard and uh, hairy on the outside, warm and wet on the inside, begins with the letter C, ends with the letter T, and has a U and an A in the middle. Hold on now. Let's let's let us have some guesses. Um, oh my God! This is the type of thing. This is the Q of the day right here. We're listening to the Q, Q of, the of the day. day the Q of okay, the day. Because, because it's going to be something else now, isn't it? Jennifer? I don't think it's going to be what we think it oh, is. Hold on, Jennifer. Oh, boy. It's got a, uh, it's got a, uh, uh, it's, it's got, it's hairy oh. on the outside, wet on the inside. Yeah. It's got a U, uh, a, a, a T, a T a, right. some other letters. Yeah. Um, is it a, uh, <laughs> It might have something to do with the song you just played. Oh, it's a coconut. <laughs> That's a uh, call Scott and Todd. That's the crap they do. That was a good Proved joke. my point. That's a Q of the D. That was See, a good joke. Bob Buckman used to do the Q of the D back in the day at BAB on Long Island. It was these these goofy, stupid, trivia things. That was a quality And everyone out joke. there... And everyone out there would be listening, going, "Oh my God, no! They're they're they're, they're actually going to say a dirty word on the radio. They're going to say a dirty word. Turn it up." I like. And uh, then the answer is coconut. Die. That joke stinks. I like I like Steve from Bayshore's contribution here. I've got a lovely jar of formaldehyde. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Merv. Uh, on the slab. <laughs> Hey, let's go to Nancy in uh, uh, Maryland. Uh, Nancy, what's up? Hi, I bet you um, two of those three million people that were listening to that coconut song was probably Gus and Elmer. Oh, Gus and Elmer must have uh, must have enjoyed the coconut song. They, they those would, old they, queens. They yeah. would sing it the way guys and girls sing Paradise by the Dashboard Lights <laughs> at weddings. <laughs> <laughs> they would section off, and Gus would sing his part, and then uh, Elmer would sing his part. With all that gusto. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Like the one. Down at an English fair, one evening I was there. there and then it'll be the other guy's part. He'd go, mm -hmm. oh. I've pulled down your underwear. Do <laughs> you think so? As they got word that Merv Griffin died, like a family member, a member had to go to the mansion and go, everybody out! The free oh. ride is over! Don't just stare at it, eat it. Roller bowl ball. That's that's terrible, I'm sorry. Just the fact that somebody heard this on the radio and actually hopped in the red soul and had to buy it. Fisher and Devil. <laughs> Went down to the record Devil. store. Hey, do you have that one? The, the coconut song. Yes, do we do. It? Of course we do. Would you like to purchase it? Just let me. <laughs> Never sing about coconuts again. Just let me. It's available in 78 RPM record. It's stereophonic. <laughs> uh, I hate people that roll their eyes. Roly poly. Roly. Oh, I can't I, do it. I've got a lovely case of AIDS. <laughs> Why is it ironic that Murph had prostate cancer? Because <laughs> uh, you know. Well, this, I guess someone should have like maybe found it, uh, realized uh, it was uh, swollen. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> should, well, uh, I'm saying he should have gone for a checkup. Uh, yes. Oh, let's say hi to cigars and scotch. <laughs> What's up, cigars and scotch? Hey, I have, I have the answer to Jennifer's question. Uh, the uh, oh, you got an answer to the Q of the day. It was Danny Terrio after Merv Griffin got through with him, <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly, yeah, Danny Terrio apparently um, was one of uh, uh, was he a, alle close, allegedly close friends of Merv? Close friends with Merv. Merv got him the uh, gig, I believe, on um, Dance that Fever. Dance Fever show. Ooh. We have any audio of Dance Fever? That was I, I grew up watching Dance Fever. Didn't 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 Dance Fever. We'll do it after the break, though. Okay, we'll find that in some other yeah. things. Yeah, and we're still looking for one good Jennifer to call the radio show. Good luck. Uh, so far, zero for two. Hey, y'all. First one was obvious. Stink. The second one had a had a had a dumb trivia thing. Oh. Where you're thinking dirty, and then of course it's not dirty. Of course it's not going to be dirty. Jennifer. 
That's, I was like, that oh, joke, though. The that's the crap that Preston and Steve do and Drew and Mike do. That's it. And exactly. Scott and Todd do here in New York. Ugh. No Q of the D's on the Opie and Anthony show. The Jennifers are calling like crazy now, Anthony. We're going to try to find one good Jennifer so you can get the bad taste out of your mouth. Finally, Ugh. after all these years. That ain't uh, going to happen, I bet you. A little something something about this show. Every time a Jennifer calls up, Anthony goes into a, a bit of a tizzy. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, that's the name of his ex-wife. Guys, you know how that is, right? Just hate the name. Hate it. Also, uh, lots of sweepers being produced for the show today <laughs> from Tim down the hall. He's getting out of control. We uh, we talked about uh, Merv Griffin dying over the weekend. Prostate yes. Prostate cancer, 82 years old. And unfortunately, he came in with this a little late, but uh, we could have used this today. It's another ONA celebrity death. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. I think he could have done a little more with that. What else to be done? I mean, that was obviously hours of labor. <laughs> <laughs> Timmy sweats over this equipment. And it's then, more about quantity than quality here. Apparently. Well, if, if you don't like that one, you might not like this one. You know when we were talking about the box office? Yep. Rush Hour, what, made uh, $50 million at the box office, number one movie over the weekend? Yep. Uh, Tim produced this. It's the o a Box Office Report. Um, I like that a lot. It's got everything you need. Laser sounds made by the mouth. Yeah. Uh, a film in the background. Yeah. And it tells you what it is. It's all uh, it needs. Yeah. You're right. And, of course, don't forget, it's also uh, Ringtone Monday Mania, Feel Good Story Monday, and Pot Talk Monday. Mm -hmm. I think we already did the Pot Talk with the whole space, uh, space shuttle endeavor. A little space talk where you look off and get a little paranoid that you're looking into infinity. Yeah. You're looking into ever. I yes. like to say you're looking into ever. Ever. It's Pot Talk Monday. Do you think the astronauts, as they're out there, they kind of take a peek to the left and go, That, Whoa. that goes forever. <laughs> that would freak oh me out. Oh, my God. I'd be like, just get me back on. On the Opie and Anthony show. Dude, that's trippy. <laughs> trippy, man. <laughs> Why is the sweeper about something that we talked about today, but he produced that like a while ago? Whoa, what's How'd up? that happen? What's up with that? Something's going on. He's I think I know. Uh, Busy B. Tim is magic. <laughs> yes, he knew <laughs> what got, we were going to say. He's got whisper. <laughs> Tim, Tim engages in whisper creep. <laughs> that's right. When he makes these sweepers. That's right. When he's not having his hair cut with retarded people. <laughs> going, Give me whatever it is he has. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with his haircut? <laughs> Nothing. It's a good haircut. Is it? Yeah. Did he see Kenny's? Oh, did he have a haircut? Yeah. Did he, did he get the front shorter so it's it's more of a t in mullet? <laughs> <laughs> Kenny has the short the shortest mullet possible. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Like you, oh, d try to get a shorter mullet than our own club soda Kenny. It's not going to happen ever, ever, ever. It's pretty much a crew cut with like a mullet thing in the back. Yeah. Uh, but 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 uh, but the back is like only like a quarter inch. Yeah, it's not that long. It's really strange. Long enough though to qualify. I think Kenny has just unusually like his hair in the back goes too far down. Yeah, it goes it's down my neck. Where he has to shave a make believe like uh, end to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, want, I want to grow a tail. <laughs> like remember the, remember the '80s guys would grow like those long rat tails. Oh, the rat there? tail. Did you have one? No. I grew a little one. Stop it. Yeah. Just, stop it. it. It was as wide as my pinky and about half a pinky. Oh. It was really lame. I'm gonna get one. The the chicks yeah. digged it. Of course they did. They'll love it. Uh, I was in uh, first grade. Uh, Jennifer in Westchester. We're going to try to do this, Anthony. We're going to try to do this today. We're going to try to find one good Jennifer out there. Yeah, please. Uh, Jennifer in Westchester, what makes you a good Jennifer? Um, the fact that while my boyfriend was in law school, I made sure to take care of him, and, you know, I did his laundry for him. I cooked food for him, and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm a family person. You know, I'm very close to my parents. I talk mm -hmm. to my mother every day. She doesn't live in the area, but... Let me translate that to you. Uh, if we ever break up... I have such a case to screw him out of uh, all of the money he makes uh, being a lawyer because I am the one that supported him and did everything while he went to school and did the actual hard work. What'd you do? Throw some clothes in a washing machine? Jesus Christ. Stop it. All of them. I support while well, he went to medical school or law school or did this. I was standing behind him. Shut up, you lotto winner. <laughs> Just shut up. I'll tell you what you did. You, you, you gave a nice uh, warm pocket 
That's what you did. Probably better than any laundry thing or cooking could have done. You gave him a warm pocket to come home to. Wow. Uh, very bitter. Uh, Jennifer. Yeah, bitter. See, I, I apologize for my friend Anthony. He, he gets like this when he hears the name Jennifer. Stupid Jennifer. It, it probably has nothing to do with you. All the right? first thing she brings up, I supported him when he was going to law school. Yeah, he was going to law school. He's the one doing the work. All right. Well, that one, that one didn't work Shut out. Shut up. Let's go on to uh, Jennifer and Monroe. Jennifer. Monroe. Jennifer and Monroe. Hi. Je yeah, I'm a great Jennifer. Oh. <laughs> All right. Now, this sounds okay. <laughs> sounds like a Jennifer you I can go and watch the ball game with. Summer camp. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Let's. We're really trying to find a real Jennifer today. Uh, let's go to Maine. Uh, Jennifer, what's up? It's Jenny. Oh, Jenny, uh, let me tell you something. Must, Hold uh, on a minute. Hold on. I don't know right. if you're following the rules of the, of the of the bit we're doing right now. Uh, the uh, Jennifer thing and the Jenny thing are kind of separate. A lot of Jennifers don't like the, to be called Jenny. Don't call me Jenny. A lot of Jennies don't like to be called Jennifer. So that means you're not part of the bit. We need a true yeah. Jennifers. That's like you're a, Bill, a Jenny. That's like us doing a William bit and Bill calls. Or Carolyn, yeah, and different. you're looking for Caroline. Caroline, Brian. All right, let's say hi to Jennifer in Pittsburgh. Jennifer, why are you a good Jennifer? We're trying to we're trying to get this bad taste out of Anthony's uh, brain there. Because I was on the uh, I was on the 55 gallon drum challenge, and since I was on your show, there could be no bad Jennifers that were on opening Anthony. All right, she was in the 55 gallon drum challenge. That's that's pretty good. So you're like crap dumped all but over you. We've had a lot of girls with a lot of different names on the show. It doesn't uh, really help the name Jennifer out. What makes you a good Jennifer? I won. Oh, she won, huh? All right. So. I bet I ragged about the, her name back then too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're 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 not. Uh, you haven't changed me. Sorry. All right, let's go to uh, bring Jennifer up something from seven years ago in Long Valley, Jennifer. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Good. I'm a cool Jennifer because I cook really well. I watch football with my husband. I play pool, and I don't talk too much when he's watching TV. And what do you think? That's that's pretty good. I kind of like it, but uh, you shouldn't be talking <laughs> while he, while he's trying to watch TV. And what do you watch the game with him? Does he really want you watching the game with him? Yeah, I actually know the game pretty well. Oh God. I love it. Only problem is that I'm a Giants fan. He's a Cowboys fan. Oh, oh boy. boy. The old rivalry at the household. Oh, there's some conflict Look in your out. household. Look out. Do you, do you wear a Cowboys jersey? or uh, Wait, you're a Giants fan. Do you wear a Giants fan and a Giants jersey and he wears a Cowboys jersey when you're watching? No, I, I, can't, I can't wear the Cowboys jersey, but I usually just wear a Giants hat and leave it at that. You know what would make you a good Jennifer? If you don't talk during the games because you couldn't talk during the games. If you know what I mean. Exactly. <sighs> oh, well, I tried. All right. The so search for anyway. a cool Jennifer. Your name Jennifer sucks. It sucks. On the Opie and Anthony Show. Shut up, and your, your, your name sucks. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they, they're just flying in now. I like the sweepers just flying in. Uh, Jennifer in New York, let's go. Trying to find one good Jennifer. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, how are you all? Hi, Jimmy. Hello. I'm a mm -hmm. good Jennifer because I've been listening to you guys since WNEW, and I've never called because I didn't want to upset Anthony with my name. There you go. Okay, Ooh. that ain't bad. All right. That ain't bad. You're off to a good start. You understand? At least that, you, you knew. The name drives him oh. nuts. <laughs> also, I believe 100% in a good prenup. Hmm. Oh, man. What kind of work do you do? Mm. <laughs> I'm a designer. Are you? Do you make more money than your husband? Pardon me? No, I'm not married. Ugh. Oh. Ah, she's getting better all the time here. All right, so you don't believe in marriage. You believe in prenups if you were going to get married, and you didn't call the show because your name was Jennifer, and you understand that upsets Anthony. She may have calmed me down a little bit. Wow. She may have calmed me down a bit. Oh, but there's something. What is it? <laughs> yeah, what? What is it, really? Let's think. Hmm. I don't know. All right, hold I on. Like Jack, 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 Jack sounds like a great cat. Cats are okay. Hold on. No one would make you. No one would make your story better. What? If you were teen, Jennifer. Hmm. A what, Jennifer? Teen. 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 Everything sounds better when you put teen in With front of it. With the word teen in front, so teen so, so, Jennifer. So we got a we got a Jennifer, like but I think we have a teen Jennifer that is standing so, by. That um, 
That is so if like. I, if I told you I was going to be bittersweet. Would that help? Teen Jennifer. Wait, what were you saying? <laughs> What'd you say? I'm turning thirteen next week. That's she turning goes. thirteen. All right, now you're just no. Now you're just joking. We got yes. a real teen Jennifer on the line. Teen Jennifer, what's up? Hello. Turn, Hello. See, she's young, so she doesn't know. Turn your radio down. Yeah. Teen. All right. What do you got, teen Jennifer? Me? Yeah. yeah. Turn down your radio. Don't yell at her. She's young. She's a teen. You have to turn your radio down. Because you're. Are you uh, yelling at me? No. We're see. yelling at you because you're stupid. Listen to us on the stupid, phone. Stupid, stupid girl. Not the radio. Listen to us you on the. I mean, a good Jennifer. I shall run by your side and beat you with it. Listen to us on the phone and not on the radio, okay? Do you understand that much so far? Oh my you God. You are so stupid! You guys are mean. I hate you people. Hi, Jennifer. Jennifer! Do you understand that you have to listen to us on the telephone and not the radio? Why would you try I'm to have a conversation with a radio? radio? Jennifer! She's talking to her radio. Jennifer! Jennifer! This is a phone call. Jennifer! What? Turn down your fucking radio! What? Turn down your radio! I just did! Yeah, two minutes later. Why were you listening to the radio instead of the telephone? You're making a telephone call. My mom was listening to the radio. Yeah, but you were answering the radio. I am. <laughs> now listen, how old are you? I'm 17. I just have a cold. My mom's driving me to the doctor to get my medicine. Oh, nothing serious, we hope. <laughs> and uh, your name's Jennifer, and you're a teen. Still listening to the radio. Oh my god, is she stupid? You just. I think you're the first teen I hate. <laughs> and everything sounds better with teen in front of it. Mark the day. We finally found a teen girl we hate. <laughs> there goes the boner whistle, too. We were doing so well. Oh. Boner whistles not uh, not happy with that phone call. Oh, I was sure we were gonna get. <laughs> but she just. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have one more Jennifer on the line? Jennifer, Florida. Jennifer, yes. Florida. Jen hi. hi. The girl that said hi. Hello? Hello. You. What's your name? Jennifer. Of course it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're learning one thing about the name Jennifer today. Oh, my God. They're all Nothing stupid. Nothing but dummies. Nothing but dummies. They are all stupid. Can I tell you something? Huh? I, I, I didn't have much of an opinion about the, the name Jennifer until today. Now, I, too, hate every when, Jennifer out there. When you take a bunch of calls from a bunch of Jennifers, you realize how truly stupid they are. What is she doing? They, like, the ones listening to the radio, this one doesn't answer her phone. You called. What makes you a good Jennifer? Yeah. What well, makes me a good Jennifer? I'm yeah. not stupid. That's okay. number one. All right. Um, there's nothing wrong with being stupid, though. No, 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 no. But I'm not. I'm not stupid. We're, um, we're looking for a girl that says, I'm not bitchy. I'm not going to take all your money. Really? I'm really not stupid. I okay. Mean, oh, like, yes. like, all right. That we get it. You're not stupid. Much. Yeah, you're not okay. stupid. All right. What makes me good, Jennifer? That I'm nice. Um, I don't... I tell you, tell you like it is. I'm... I shoot guns with my fiance. What do you mean you I tell have... it like it is? You're a shoot from the yeah. hip gal. What? Shoot from the hip gal, are you? You tell it straight. What do you mean by I tell it like it is? Give an example. I just told you I wasn't stupid, didn't I? And that's telling it like it is. <laughs> yeah. Tough as nails, she is. What do you excel I, in I uh, hate intellectually? That I tell it like it is. <laughs> what does that mean? 
Yeah, like where's an example of where you, you gave somebody some tough what medicine? Yeah, give us an like example where you didn't take any guff from anyone. <laughs> I'm not taking guff from you, are I? No, no, but where's the, you're not telling it like it is. Like, where's an example of where you really told someone like it is? Yeah, you gave them the business. Do you honestly think you're hanging with us? Are you kidding me? We're just like we're just tapping you around like you're a little kitten. <laughs> Don't make us pull out the shovel. Now, wh what do you mean by you tell it like it is? Well, it's. <clears throat> If you're really looking for nice Jennifers, right. then, it, you know, and you're going to treat them like this, then you're not going to find them. Jennifer, I'm asking you I'm asking you very nicely, like, what do you do to tell it like it is? Where's an example of where you really gave somebody the, me the medicine? Right. I can't lie. You can't lie? Okay, where's an example of where you didn't lie and you gave someone some, yeah. some a tough bit of information, you told it like it was. Do you, it like do you it understand is. if you're Jennifer calling this show, we're finally talking about this, if you're Jennifer calling this show, you're in a tough position to begin with. That's why there's a, an edginess uh, to, to Anthony talking. You have to, you. to excel, you have to be better right. than any other girl's name. By saying I tell like it is isn't going to help uh, the situation. Tell it like it is. Why would you tell it any other way? This is the way it is. Tell it that Unless way, you, you have an example. dummy. You, we need... Oh! Hello. Oh no! She shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> oh, I'm covered. <laughs> See your head come apart like that. All right. Well, we're still in search of a of a of a of a of a, a cool Jennifer. Your stories have to be like, all I wear is lingerie. Right. I work out all the time. I got the perfect body. They have to excel. They have to excel way above and, and beyond. And being just that uh, that 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 uh, that female thing, the ultimate female thing. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? The search for a cool Jennifer. Your name Jennifer sucks. It sucks on the Opie and Anthony show. Shut up! And your your name sucks. <laughs> Well, we failed today, uh, and I'm yep. sorry about that. That's all right. I knew it would uh, fail. Let's go to Syracuse. Anthony, what's up? Hey, I got a good uh, cue. Of <laughs> Why the delay with everybody today? Uh -huh. Why? You got a what? <laughs> a good cue of the D. You got okay. a good, all right, a cue of the D. Let's go. Yeah, okay. What gets longer when you pull it fits possibly between a nice pair of boobs Wait. and goes neatly in a slot. Okay, hold on. Longer when you pull it, fits nicely between boobs, and goes nicely in a slot. Yep. A hat. <laughs> no? No. Um, a Buick? <laughs> <laughs> Close. Um, it's, uh, of course, a trick cue of the day. Is this a trick cue of the day? Yep. All right, hey. well, what's the answer? Seatbelt. Uh, thrown from the vehicle. I right, listen. <laughs> Why do you think we would have <laughs> would care about that? I have no idea. Huh? <laughs> Are you listening uh, on the on? Uh, you're in uh, in Syracuse, right? Yeah. Isn't there like a hacky morning show that might suit you better? Anthony no suck too. Look at this. What? <laughs> what happened? Oh yeah, Anthony. Anthony. No, you don't. You're Chew good with though. With a D. All right, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The beauty is like radio stations that will actually do that and then make yeah. you sit through a break before they give you the trick answer. Yeah, we'll be back with the answer to the Q of the day. Got an update there, Ant? Uh, yeah. Should let everyone know because so you were talking about it a couple hours ago, but Anthony had uh, a very long weekend. He's still wearing his uh, clothes from Saturday. So my Saturday clothes. But you changed your underwear. Uh, yeah. I do that. It's clean. Trust me. But then why wouldn't you change the rest of your clothes? Because I had a pair of underwear with me um, from the Renaissance uh, thing. Like I had a, <laughs> I had a, I had a pair of underwear. I had that and clean underwear. Yeah. Because like <laughs> I wore this. Right. To the Renaissance fair. But I, I wanted like clean clothes to go with the uh, Renaissance clothes. Right. So I had but un the undergarments. Under but the underpants you put on that morning, which would be Saturday, wouldn't those be clean up for the whole day? Well, I knew we were going to be out. I needed a clean pair. So but later on. So when I put these back on, they were clean because I wore these for, like, nothing. Right. So, so you've been wearing those since Saturday night. I didn't want to wear right. the same underwear for two nights in a row. So when did you put on the new underpants? Put on the new underpants uh, when I put on the new Renaissance gear. And then I put these back on. After when the Renaissance I put, Festival. Right. So they're not new underpants now, are they? 
Uh, that, that's two days ago. Two days ago, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but anyway. No, I... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you just need a break today. I had a hard, I know. long, hard evening. <laughs> Anthony, uh, his girl is uh, getting her gallbladder out today. Yeah, stupid gallbladder. Right at what, 9 o'clock? Um, well, they give her like a sonogram at nine. Nine, and then see you know, see where everything is. Yeah, and then they go poking around and, and, and yank out a gallbladder. Ta da! And then they go ta da. Are you gonna save the gallbladder? Oh yeah, you eat it. You cook it up. You fry it up. You eat it. That's good luck. Bring it to the show. We could do something with it. Oh, I'm sure. Every time someone gets a body part removed, we're like, ah, bring it to the show. We should have a collection of just body parts. We'll just we'll, we'll do something with it. We'll figure something out. <laughs> somebody wear it as a hat. Right. I think it's called a biohazard. I understand, but it didn't stop us back in the day. Now, did it? No. What if you could blow one up like a balloon? <laughs> and then see see at what point it pops. <laughs> how about like we have a contest? See, uh, you know how 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 much we could blow it up. Mm. So they're prepping for surgery right now? Oh, yeah. I'm just getting the update out there for everybody. Yes, they do a sonogram at 9, and uh, of course I'll be uh, out of here. Right. On my way. <sighs> and then probably um, uh, 8,000 hours after that, they'll, they might get things started. It kind of takes a while. When do you think they'll Hospital finally... time is very slow time. It's very, you enter this realm of slowness. Where you just sit there and say, when can we see the doctor? <laughs> I'm not sure. It'll be a couple of minutes. And then like an hour and a half later... Very shortly. <laughs> Just hospital time, man. When you're in that situation, you think, all right, well, we're going to have a test done. Yeah. So you're thinking they're just getting, they're just preparing for the test. There's, they're, Fiddling with everything, big knobs and, I like your, and levers. And I, I like how you're doing the, the physical motion of them fiddling with knobs like Dr. Frankenstein. That's what I mean. He's using these yeah. giant knobs yeah, that you're like, turning and, and you're, like, you're flipping giant switches. But that's why <laughs> But that's why I, I always assume you wait so long because they're just, they're just calculating everything. Yeah. Making sure all the equipment's ready to go for the test. Exactly. With the big knobs and the levers. And... They, <laughs> and no, it's that ain't it. Actually, the you know the reality is the test would take seconds. They just they just they just figured ah, might as well let you wait all day. They're very busy doing we, what? Uh, Seriously, uh, doing what? Tending to a lot of friggin' people. How many people? I don't are know what happens on a Sunday. Uh, the the emergency room was packed with what? What packed. kind of injuries? Uh, let's see. There was a, a leg injury. Here's me too. I'm I'm like sitting there and and I was I was pretty hungover. I'm sitting in the waiting room before. Tr triage where they bring you in and figure out if you're you know good enough to even come in uh and this uh woman had a bad ankle and she got called up to the triage area and as she's walking she goes oh like that and and almost goes down and for a split second i thought of getting up and helping her and then i'm like nah i couldn't be bothered and then i felt bad when she limped over to triage i'm like Maybe I should have, like, you know, hey, take my arm, I'll walk you over. Why? So she could fall and sue you? That's what I thought, too. No. I'm afraid of lawyers. What? I, I didn't think you thought about it at all. No, I, 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 I kind of did afterwards a little bit. But maybe she was, like, uh, yelling out in pain because she realized how this whole thing works. you, you got to be in pain. Yeah, if you're going to the emergency room, service. you gotta, you got to play it Yeah. for all you got. Is a lot that... of people with stomach problems stomach were there problems. on Sunday morning. Why would you go to the emergency room with stomach problems? I don't know, bu like buckled over uh, a stomach problem. Well, that's what my girlfriend was there for. Her stomach hurt, oh, good point. but it turns out to be a gallbladder. All right, good point. But uh, there was some buckled no, over No, people. no, no, but she didn't... Yeah, she knew, you know, She knew it wasn't it was. her stomach, yeah. right? Because yeah. isn't that more off to the side it's like the stuff? side back kind of thing. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of people there um, with uh, leg injuries, and then there's people you don't know what the hell they're in there for. And a lot of old people. You know, old people just falling apart. I got to smell that um, that um, uh, old uh, decaying smell. It's called death. Some woman, old woman, passed me by, and it's just this, 
Yeah, powder mixed with... It's a thick, heavy smell. It's really, yeah, like, yeah. You can almost feel it. Elderly. It's like an old dog has a smell. You know an old dog smells? Yeah. And that's what happens to humans, too. They just get a smell. So it's packed with that. Every room's packed. They have people lined up outside the rooms, lining the hallways. Yeah. It's just a massive amount. It was like, ooh, like they were giving stuff away over there. That's not fun. No. And just arrived. It's one of those crazy days. E-Rock just arrived. Bob Uh, Kelly's here because we didn't think Anthony was going to arrive. Louis C.K. might be here, but he might be here later. Yeah, it was, uh, please don't compare me with E-Rock being late also. Like, like Anthony's late, E-Rock's late. <laughs> All right, why don't we take care of E-Rock first? Same level of importance. Yeah, yeah and, and same level of late every day. I am here, I am promptly here every day. Right, you have a reason today. E-Rock, uh, I don't know. Maybe we should start the reason why E-Rock is late bit. But, uh, it's official, we do have a sweeper, so. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> e rocks late. E rock. 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 On the Obi and Anthony show. <laughs> <laughs> He's just I'm shaking not his good. head. He's just shaking his head over there. Ah. <laughs> 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 Wake up, E Rock. <laughs> wake up. <laughs> wake, wake, no, you gotta get up. <laughs> <laughs> well, the guys behind the scenes have been uh, keeping track of how late E Rock is every day on a daily basis. And it kind, it kind of came to a head today because he called in with some kind of weird problem. And we all just kind of laughed because we're like, you're late every day. You're yeah. finally calling today to tell us you're going to be late. Wow. And then Tim ran into his uh, production room and made a sweeper. So there you go. What what happened to you, you rock? What's the deal? My uh, car battery is dead. I do absolutely nothing around here. Oh, so you figured you could uh, come in late. Thanks. So your car battery is dead. What year is your car? It's uh, 2001. <laughs> Yeah, oh. yeah, that happens. It's like a 1978 excuse. <laughs> yeah, my Gran Torino didn't start. <laughs> <laughs> All right, car didn't start. What? What? Ha- was it completely dead, or was it? Was it? There's a couple of kinds of dead. There's the. <laughs> and that's like there's a chance. And then there's this one. Oh, that is the worst. Which is pretty much you're screwed. And then there's this one. And that's real bad. Yeah, that's <laughs> just just the, the, no- the nothing, the key turning, and yeah. oh boy, there's a problem. That's well, almost better, actually. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, when, you go, when you're going through that whole you know, uh, process, though, you're like, yeah. all right, I, I think I should. Oh, I'm going to try on. it again. All right, all right, all right. Oh, uh, uh, stop right don't, there. Don't stop kill right it. There. Don't kill it. Don't if kill I, it. Okay. If I pump right. the gas, all right. I'm going to wait. Pump the gas. I'm going to wait five minutes. All right. All right, here we go. Stop, stop, stop. You start yelling at the person, stop! And then you just give it. Then you just gotta give it the shot. What, oh. It always ends because you're being conservative. You hear it and you're like, "Oh man, I'm not ready to fully give it a shot." Yeah, yeah. And then save a little. And then, yeah, you just go nuts and until it's just clicking. Okay. Click, Make click, sure everything's click. off. Turn my radio off. <laughs> yeah. Turn my air conditioner off. Everything's off. Don't push down on the gas. You're gonna, Max you're power gonna, you're to flood. the engine. You're going to flood it with gas. Don't push yeah. down too much. Don't flood it. <laughs> of course, a car that hasn't been made that could be flooded since the 70s. Yeah. Good, good point, sir. Good point. <laughs> flooded. When was the last time your buddy had to go, it's flooded. <laughs> you smell gas all around. <laughs> it's like a high school excuse. <laughs> Damn it, flooded. Pop the, pop the uh, hood and hold down the choke. <laughs> you have to have a friend. No, it's a special way. Put your finger uh, in there and keep the butterfly valve open in the choke a quarter of the way. Boom. <laughs> now you get like a... Pop of flames comes out of your carb. Ah, the good old days. And then yeah, and then it goes completely dead. You're like, hey, you got yeah. jumper cables, jumper cables, cables. What? And you got to flag cables. someone down. 
Uh, anyway, we got Kevin from Connecticut. He writes, E-Rock should be woken up by the uh, Buffalo Rapist every morning. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm with not his, telling that with story With his hoodie again. on. <laughs> that, uh, people... <laughs> I'm not telling the story again. I mean, you know, you're either in or, or not in on that joke. Very good. Kevin from Connecticut. And then uh, oh, uh, Matt, the therapist from South Carolina, writes, Opie, it wasn't the car. It was his brain. Oh, <laughs> did that need a jump start? So, E-Rock, do you feel good that you got a sweeper, though? Not really. <laughs> I think it's kind of cool when Tim finally gives you a sweeper on this yeah. radio show. So. It's like a badge of honor. What time did Eric get here? How late was he? Got oh. here about 5.30. So, so, oh. so basically, he was only 10 minutes late today. Yeah. That's no big deal. You got a jump? No. What happened? It's still sitting there on the side. On the side of what? By the way. Where I parked. Oh. Hey, uh, by the way, what time did you say you got here? About 5.30. Yeah, actually, you got here at 5.33 and 58 seconds. Ah, they, they keep track every they day. They really do. So it's 5.54, <laughs> you round it up. 5.34, right. 5.34, yeah, sorry. My girlfriend. That was 5.54. <laughs> Anthony got here at 5.54. Anthony got here 10 minutes ago. So uh, It was like a NASCAR event driving in today. Oh, my God. So I'm doing more traffic. I'm doing the house. natural seg, but yeah. your lateness has nothing to do with dummy's lateness. <laughs> so, I was, so I'm on time usually. So what happened? Well, uh, my girlfriend had to have her, her gallbladder taken out. It was inflamed and had gallstones in it. It's like a little satchel of marbles, <laughs> like a marble bag with Aggies in it. <laughs> so they had to do that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, when you're on hospital time, it's just a whole different animal. Hospital time in real time just doesn't. Uh, when someone goes, it's going to be a couple of minutes, usually. Usually it's like a couple of minutes, five minutes like that. But the hospital's like, it's going to be a couple of minutes. <laughs> We're going to get right to the problem. And then you what? Why are they moving in slow motion? What happened? Let me get the surgeon and he'll discuss things with you in about 16 hours. <laughs> oh my God, how do you do that? Why? Why does it have to be 16 hours? He's got other patients to tend to, and he does it very slowly. <laughs> I heard that on the replay. I'm like, people are going to think we're just slowing down a tape or something. That's actually Anthony. No, uh, that's how it that's sounds. A, that's an amazing impression. And you man. sit and wait. So she was supposed to go in there at like, um, I guess, 3 o'clock. And um, they give you a... Wait, 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 wait. But you were supposed to do it Monday. Oh, yeah. It was supposed to be Monday. And then Monday. it was 3 o'clock yesterday. What time did the surgery and It was 3 o'clock yesterday. Happen. Well, uh, they give you a beeper. They give you a little beeper. And say it's time? Like, and, you're, like you're waiting at uh, like TGIF? Exactly. The, 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 and that's what they said. It's like Applebee's or something. They give you a beeper. The Cheesecake Factory or whatever you, it's called? You you're go to the Cheesecake Factory. You're yeah. sitting outside with your stupid big beeper? Your beeper. So they give you a beeper... In the OR waiting room. So there's people there that are just like, you know, they're waiting for things as simple as, you know, uh, my girl's operation's pretty routine. Right. The, the gallbladder thing, and she's uh, young so and healthy, so it's not a big deal. And then there's people sitting there with doom and gloom on their face waiting for the doctor to say, alive or dead. So, so it's just, it's horrific to have to sit there. So I didn't do it. So wait, I've never been in the... Uh, I. I Oh, our waiting room is just. I'm, oh, wow. There's like four rooms, and there's all families sitting in each of so the rooms. So, some of those people are having that death surgery. Dude, we, yes. Remember that guy, that creepy guy that used to advertise on our show about the cancer of the neck, throat, yes. eyebrows, We eyelids. are here for stereotactic surgery for <laughs> cancers of the neck, liver, chest, leg, goiter, tongue, eyeballs, hair, armpits. Armpit. Stereotactic radio surgery puts seed implants for prostate, leg, anal, and whatever cancer you have, we will try to take care of it. That was the guy that also did uh, George Harrison and decided it was a good time when George Harrison had old pudding brain to go in and have his guitar signed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he so he, he got, uh, I think he had a little ethics problem there, and now he's, you know, he's well, clipping toenails and, somewhere and, at an and, old age home. Oh, and we were the problem. Yeah, back, we were the problem. And we were the problem back in the day. We had to run these stupid commercials. Because they had the cancer dancers. piano music behind. It was like, it's like, it's like, it's like, 
man. Does a loved one have cancer? Cancer of the neck, nostrils. throat, nostrils, <laughs> back of head, <laughs> tailbone. He'd like list a bunch of places, and you're like, I can't for the tailbone. Yeah, but yeah, of the spine. It's like we all know what what kind of cancer you get, but this guy like oh, added, he came and, up with added one. So many more to oh, worry about. <laughs> cancer of the teeth, cheeks, eyelids, gums. nostrils, right, sinus, gums. Yeah, there's <laughs> a little ball bag on in the back of your throat. Adam's apple, yeah. fingernails, yeah. Uh, fingerprints. <laughs> Cancer of the fingerprints. So well, Is that even possible? So, uh, you know, um, so back in the day, we're playing these commercials, and Aunt and I finally had it. We're doing afternoon drive. We're supposed to be happy and entertaining people, so we take his stupid commercials, and we start playing music behind him to, like, to, to see how the up. mood changes. So we started playing, like, Benny Hill music as he's <laughs> he's talking about these horrific <laughs> cancers. <laughs> cancer of the neck, head, chest. It was like, wow, okay, this is more of an upper. And then we tried. It feels better. I remember we tried porno music. We Porn. Tried, oh, it was everything. We tried all sorts of uh, different music beds. And then, uh, of course, a guy in a suit. I don't even remember their names anymore. Come, They come marching into the studio and they oh. give you that finger thing. Like, come here. Come here. The doctor's very angry. Follow me so we can yell at you, even though you guys are adults. He comes in and works on these pieces. <laughs> And and you guys are putting different music behind it. He works on this, chooses the music and everything. All right. Enough. Don't worry about it. What, what so, put the Beatles music behind it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Little George Harrison. <laughs> so the, you know, there's that room. So you're supposed to go in the room, uh, and you can take the beeper if you want to go to like get something to eat. It covers the whole hospital. Right. So I'm wearing the beeper, and I'm not going to sit in the room. You know, I don't want to hear people. <laughs> And, and then they have off the room are the little private rooms where it goes doctor, family, consultation rooms. Oh, boy. So you just know trouble's going on in there. And then you look to the side, and there's, like, the chapel. Oh, and the priest God. is walking around. That's You're like, oh, this is the bad area. The bad area. Bad. So uh, I decided to go into onto the other end. Close, but the other end of the hallway. There's a big glass room. And this family's sitting in there, and they don't seem so sad. Uh, and there's TV in there. So I go in and I watch, and I'm sitting down, and Lifetime is on. A Lifetime oh, movie is on. God, and why? there's And there's women sitting in there. So I'm like, I'm just going to sit. I'm just going to watch this. It was so embarrassing to sit there. You'd think a Lifetime is a safe thing, but it was a movie about... Uh, a dentist played by Tom Wop Wopat. <laughs> Tom Wopat was the dentist, and apparently he was raping his patients. <laughs> and I'm sitting there with these old ladies, and I have to watch this, and I'm looking up, and there's Tom Wopat, and a woman is under anesthesia, and Tom Wopat's hands going up uh, like her thigh, and he's unbuttoning the shirt, and I'm looking nervously over at the women. <laughs> He raped me! It was so embarrassing. Dude, I was turning red. I kept looking over my shoulder out the window like, is a doctor coming to consult with me? Because I didn't want to look at the screen. Why would they watch Lifetime in a hospital? There was one rape victim, and she had no one to back up a story. So right. Tom Wopat just said, look, it's consensual sex. He got her pregnant. So they did the DNA testing, and, and Tom Wolpat's baby, it was, and he said, well, no, we had an affair. She's a married woman, but an affair. She's like, hey, right. All right, how did he get caught? They always uh, well, get caught because that's the women's channel. They had, they, the guys they, are all scum on that channel. Well, his lawyer was very good. It was, uh, what's her name? Wonder Woman. <laughs> that Wonder Woman was his Linda lawyer. Linda Carter? Yes, Linda Carter was his lawyer. And then I believe, uh, who's the uh, uh, Emmy Award uh, win or the Emmy nominated but never won actress? Susan Lucci. Susan Lucci, I believe, was yeah. the other lawyer. And uh, they um, uh, figured with the rape victim, the original one, she found another woman that was raped. So they go into court figuring this is a slam dunk. But this private investigator for uh, Linda Carter comes up. She was an actress, you know, and a budding aspiring actress. What did he find, the private investigator? Nice little video and pictures of her early modeling days. So threw her out. Couldn't use her as a, a witness because she was doing porno. 
But why can't you use someone uh, as a witness just because they did porno back in the day? Uh, it doesn't matter, because Tom I, Walpat's I, lawyer, I, Linda I Carter, was just you, fantastic. I hate that crap when you read about cases and stuff. Oh. This person was thrown out because, you know, they went to a kegger once in yeah. college. Well, that's what they do. <laughs> I mean, it's like... That's they do. So they figured what they got to do is plant They still cameras. saw the car accident. I mean, give me a break. Doesn't matter. Plant Not a cameras. credible witness. They planted cameras in the, uh, in the uh, office and... Uh, Got a female cop that was attractive and needed dental work. Ooh. What are the odds? He gave her a good cleaning. All of a sudden, oh, look, my face and hair are clean, too. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what he was doing. <laughs> so so they have the cameras on him. Wait, so she had big boobies and like, oh, yeah, yeah. And like a, and a, and a food pocket that <laughs> needed <laughs> yeah. cleaning out? They, they had a tender moment where she didn't want to do it, so the rape victim had to sit her down and say, we can't have this happen to another woman. Ew. And she's like, well, I'm not sure if I'm ready for this. You need to be strong. She goes, but what if he touches me and stuff? We'll be there for you. Wheel, the other rape victim. And then she told a story. She goes, I understand because when I went into my first teaching class, I was scared too. It's like you're in like a classroom with kids, not some dentist who's zipping his fly down. <laughs> Jesus. That, that, that has Kinda the nerve switch the going off. Same uh, 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 level of importance on this whole thing. Boy, uh, didn't she have other cops watching? No no cop goes to yes, the they 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 did. tapes later. They had cameras and cops in the next room and everything. And she still didn't know if she could do it? Yeah, exactly. She's in the wrong profession. So they give her the uh, anesthesia. She's laying there. She gets into the recovery room. And, and then uh, Tom Wolpack comes in and starts like putting his hand down her shirt. But he starts taking off like the um the uh uh heart monitor stuff yeah and 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 but then he kisses her why do you need heart monitor stuff i don't know getting your it's teeth dental clean. work but it's tom wolpat i don't know so he, he starts kissing her but uh then a nurse walks in and they're like damn it we don't have enough damn it so it ruined the whole thing but then they figured she had a little residual pain that night yeah so they sent her back for an emergency visit at night when he's alone and there's no uh, nurse in the office so he goes in brilliant puts her under gets her in the recovery room and then he really starts going at it and this is where i was completely embarrassed i'm sitting in the waiting room a bunch of old ladies i'm watching this stupid lifetime movie and tom wolpat goes to town unbuttons her shirt her sweater Opens it up. There's her ample breasts in a pink little bra. Just heaving. Heaving. Whoa. And then, and then he pulls her skirt up. And then Tom Wolpat, you see, he takes his shirt off. And Tom Wolpat's hairy chest from the chest up, you see. And then you hear, zip. Oh, yeah. Then what happened? And then the walkie-talkie yeah. from the cop. All right. Make the move. Go, go, go. <laughs> and the whole time, the rape victim is actually sitting next to the cop watching the video. Like, she'd be allowed in. And all she's doing is these uncomfortable squirms going, oh, no, oh, no, holding herself like, oh, no, oh, oh, watching the monitor. Then what happened? The cops burst in and go, yeah. freeze, police. All right. And they arrest Tom Wopat <laughs> for the dental rapist that he is. And then they had sex with a cop. Yeah. She was still out. Just, yeah. She was still out, so the two cops <laughs> banged her. Oh, it was great. <laughs> and then she woke up and said, oh, it was ugly. It was horrible. Oh, they was blamed bad. it on Tom Wopat. Right. <laughs> Get yourself to a, a doctor, <laughs> stupid Tom Wopat. And the title was like some something, and then it was subtitled, She Woke Up Pregnant. And, of course, they had the, the big uh, controversy between her and the husband. Oh, yeah. Who was, like, now bitter because she's pregnant with some guy's uh, baby, the dentist rapist. And he's like, I don't know how to handle this. I, I walk around. I'm the joke of the town. So wh how did that end? Uh, I, I don't think they got back together. Oh, no. Uh, you know, you, there's some uh, residual uh, collateral damage yeah. in those movies. It's so embarrassing. The old ladies are watching, and I'm looking, and I'm looking at the, Tom Wolpat's hand going up her leg, and I'm looking at her, and I got my hand up her thigh because I'm just <laughs> looking, watching the movie. <laughs> you should just unzip your fly. <laughs> start, start, just, start just cranking. <laughs> I love this movie. If someone's crying, yo, shut up. I'm trying to keep my rod. <laughs> keep it down. <laughs> Pipe down. Why would you watch Lifetime waiting for a loved was... one to have some horrific operation? Because it's on. Like, I no, have no not choice. You, not you. Oh, I know. Why you didn't today? have a horrific operation. Yours was, uh, you know, your girl's operation was, you know, it's one of the ones that is kind of easy. Yeah. But I'm sure, you know, not everyone in this situation had an had easy operation well, they were waiting for the outcome. No. Of. There was people being wheeled by, I swear, with their heads, like big scars down their shaved heads. Like this brain surgery going on right next door. 
and I'm watching Tom Wopat. Yeah. And then, and then the, the, the after the Tom Wopat movie's over, the, the one the woman goes, "You could change this if you want because straight, gay, or taken was coming on." Where the woman's got to guess if the guy's straight, gay, or taken. Oh. It's a game show kind of thing. Uh-huh. She goes, you could change this if you want. Like, could I could you change Tom Wolpat? So I put on Leave It to Beaver. Well, you should have watched, watched straight, gay, or taken. I think she didn't want it on. She was offended by it. And I'm sitting there watching Tom Wolpat uh, uh, diddle. Leave It to Beaver's better than straight, gay, or taken? I love Leave It to Beaver. Yeah. It was the accordion episode. <laughs> it's great. All right, who wants to do the beaver joke? Just kidding. <laughs> uh, I watched Tom Wopat just before. Why am I watching it now? All right. Straight gay or taken, how, how would she tell? She would just smell the guy's breath? <laughs> <laughs> Chlorine. <laughs> All right, we'll get part two of the story because we don't even know when the surgery of happened. Of course. It's supposed to be 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You're going to tell us the, de- the time. Yes. Quick, uh, Maybe a quick bet for everybody out there. A bet? A bet? Oh. A bet? All right, I'll put money down. Oh, damn, I know the answer. I'm a shoe in. All right, they're going to guess what time the operation was. Yes. Uh, considering you got here, like, the, as Ecstasy of Gold was playing, I, I yeah. imagine it was pretty late in the day. Rode up like Clint. <laughs> <laughs> when we were driving up uh, Saturday for the uh, fun of the Renaissance Fair, oh. we were stopped just before that by a uh, big a big uh, fireman. Uh, we're doing this thing where they were stopping cars and asking for money. Mm-hmm. You know how they do that sometimes. Yeah. So uh, they had these buckets, and all the guys had wow stickers on them. Very cool. So I pull up, you know, I throw them some cash, and uh, I, I go, uh, what's uh, what's uh, the, wow, wow, what's that sticker? Oh, Opie and Anthony show. And then they named the station here in New York, said 92.3 uh, K-Rock. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I go, you listen to them guys? Yeah, yeah, every morning. I was like, oh, okay, take it easy. <laughs> Maybe he didn't recognize you because you were dressed like D'Artagnan. <laughs> Perhaps that was a problem. I didn't think of that. Well, I stopped. Anthony couldn't possibly be this big of an a hole. <laughs> I stopped chasing guys on the LIE that have wow stickers because they because they think I'm a creep. <laughs> I was like, or a I chick wanting to wow you, no, <laughs> wow them. I, I would queer. be dr- uh, well. That's what I'm getting at. I was dr- I would drive on the LIE. I would see a wow sticker, so I would speed up. And like get all excited, like hey, that's me. And they <laughs> that's would, me. and they would just start driving faster. Like get what away, is wrong with this creep! I'm looking for chicks. You, you, you queer. Because <laughs> you're pointing down. They think it's like you're pointing like into the lap. Like, <laughs> right. Hello. Yeah, hey, I'll pull, 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 pull over. <laughs> so if you if you have a wild sticker, I'm out there and I appreciate it. But I'm not going to be honking anymore or chasing you. I'll just let you live your life. <laughs> I just get a little excited. Leave them alone. Thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got uh, the guy, and he actually pulled him over, and you're like, "It's me." He goes, "I know, Opie." Yeah, I know. Oh, whatever. Embarrassing. Oh, how I, funny would that be? I, I I'm know, late. I, I'm late for work. Yes, I'm late. I get it. Jesus, it's man. It's not even my car, man. I'm borrowing it from my brother. <laughs> All right, what do you got there? So I, the second half of the hospital story. I got to correct my mistake. You certainly, it do. was not Tom Wopat. I always got Tom Wopat confused with Joe Penny. Did you? As you were trying to scrap at three in the morning alone. <laughs> <laughs> When you're fantasizing about what man would take you, you would want to take Wolpat. Shut up. <laughs> that was that was Tom Wolpat's hairy chest. Well, <laughs> it was <laughs> Joe Penny's hairy chest. He really and then it. he zipped, unzipped. <laughs> Who cared? It was just embarrassing. So you're watching the Lifetime movie. You I was have watching that. To do. And then and then a commercial came on for a new Lifetime movie where uh, none other than uh, lovable Kevin Arnold, Fred Savage. Uh, is on the screen and they play nice music and then all of a sudden he's um he's with some chick and everything's going fine and it's a typical a typical lifetime thing everything's going dandy until they really start hooking up and getting together and knowing each other and then he's just beating the crap out of this chick and she's like is this love is this what you call love in a very special lifetime movie white snake is this love let's it's go you rock Red Savage. No, we need that uh, lifetime crappy, like, sap music. In a new lifetime movie starring Fred Savage, he's moved on from being Kevin Arnold, and now he's a real douche. And he's just beating this woman. Why do you. You said you love me! And he's choking her against the wall. It's like, that's how you get credibility if you were, like, Tom Arnold. Or Kevin Arnold. Tom Arnold. If you were Kevin Arnold, yeah. little Fred Savage, uh, and, and you want to kind of get that behind you, you do a Lifetime movie and play a rapist or someone that just beats women. 
And then at the end, you get burnt in a bed or shot <laughs> or something. Yeah, there you go. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I was Kevin Arnold. <laughs> I used to beat Winnie Cooper like this. Well, it was very embarrassing in the uh, waiting room. But like I said, yeah. uh, I was in the hospital there because uh, my girlfriend had her gallbladder Which taken was out. It was supposed to happen Monday. Then it was supposed to happen yesterday at 3. Yesterday uh, at uh, 3. So they go, oh, we're going to take her down in there uh, a little early. I go, oh, good. They give me the beeper. You could go anywhere with the beeper. So I'm just sitting there, and now you're, you're waiting for the beeper to go off, you know? You don't want any problems. You don't want any complications or anything like that. So... Uh, 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 about an hour and a half went by, and my beeper goes off. I'm like, oh, that's quick. That's a little quicker than they said. So I rush down there, and uh, the woman goes, oh, um, no, I just wanted to tell you that they just started. I'm like, what? Why the? Oh, jeez. How long the procedure? It takes about uh, two hours. So it's like they just started. So now it's uh, in 3.15. And uh, they had just started. We, we, we uh, just started the operation. <laughs> it was supposed to be at two thirty, and then three, <laughs> but now it's three fifteen. <laughs> what? It's three. What? <laughs> so she reboots my beeper oh. and says, uh, do, "Do they just didn't want you to worry?" But uh, they started now. When they rebooted your beeper, did they say smoking or non-smoking? <laughs> yeah. What do you want? Do you want a booth? Try the dessert. We have a cheesecake. Where are you going to be? At, Jubilee. Are you going to be at the bar? Are you going to be waiting outside? Cause bar. I wish there was a, nice a bar. Out. I had to go back to stupid lifetime. Yeah. But uh, uh, no, they give you a beeper, and you got to wait for it. And, and uh, then, <clears throat> then the beeper goes off again a little later, and I'm like, okay, it's done. No, it's just time to turn in the beepers. Now you got to wait in that area you can't mosey around anymore for the doctor so i'm just waiting and wait waiting and waiting and waiting did you go in the chapel like rocky and just pray for her? hey you know hey biggie did you go in the the room and read to her someday you will come back yeah, she gave birth to a wonderful gallbladder <laughs> yeah, yeah i want to thank you but mickey not here you <laughs> hey yeah, maybe me, you, and a gallbladder go to the zoo. <laughs> I like the tigers. Shack ass. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the uh, the I, I went back there and had had to wait for the uh, the doctor now to come in. And at this whole time, it's just ping, 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 text, 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 text. Everybody, what's happening? How's that? How is she doing? This, that. I had to take phone calls from relatives. <laughs> I, you know, Why don't you like what? taking phone calls from relatives? I barely um, talk to my own family. I understand that. I love my family. Don't get me wrong. I love my mommy. I love um, Donny. I love Sal. Christmas shoes. <laughs> Joe. My media family. Right. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not used to dealing with girlfriends' families. I usually come from girlfriends uh, that, um, I don't know, their family was wiped out in some cataclysm. <laughs> or or the, the father left and that. So, you know. Ah, but I got to deal with family members. But I do that. It's part of the thing. I deal with uh, Jen and Buddy, her sister and uh, brother-in-law out right. in uh, Colorado. Okay. And then uh, she was nice enough to make the family calls after I got the info. But uh, they, they uh, kind of come out and one, one, one doctor comes out. And this woman comes out, and now they're talking right in front of me because I can't leave that area. Right. And you know me with hospital stuff. I don't like watching ER because it's too gruesome. You don't like getting just stuff on your hands in the morning. No. You're, you get creeped out by all this stuff, germs and things. Um, th Things went well. Things went well. Wait, you're hearing them talking yeah. to another family? Yes. Oh, God. Things went well. We removed a liter and a half of liquid from his <laughs> chest cavity. <laughs> Um, what we had to do to make the cavity smaller, because the liquid uh, keeps forming in there, we put a drain in, and we had to rough up the rib cage. <laughs> I used like a, uh, and he's telling saying this, I used a um, a file, yeah. and we roughed up the rib cage, so now uh, th when it heals, the lungs will adhere to the rib cage to uh, diminish the size of that pocket that the liquid was. He used a cheese grater on the inside of his ribs. Know what it sounds like? Ugh. 
If you ever take a peek at those uh, cooking shows, they're like, all right, so yes. how'd you make the cake? <laughs> this is what the, the, I had to listen to this. this and is I'm, what the surgeon sounds I'm, like. I'm getting all woozy because <laughs> it's, it's just, oh, I'm picturing someone taking a cheese grater to the inside of your rib cage, <laughs> oh and it's horrifying me. <laughs> and it's, it's like, he goes, it works like a Velcro. <laughs> the lungs will stick to the rib cage now and eliminate the pocket. She goes, but there's, he's there, he goes, there's going to be a drain in there, yeah. and you're going to have to have a, a whole home nurse that comes in every two days is going to have to pump that liquid out. Ew. Pump the liquid. Pump the liquid. Because, But we didn't find any um, tumors or anything. And they're talking tumors, and I'm just, like, freaking out. And then they... Uh, you know what I think when you hear that type of thing? What? There goes that guy's sex life. It's, it's over. Who the hell wants to bang him when, when the person knows that a nurse has to come and drain his chest? Drain yeah, that hey. chest liquid. Banana juice sweat? could actually go nothing. all over your oh, chest while oh, you're having sex with oh, him. Yeah, nothing oh. nothing takes the sexiness away from sex when you realize the, the person you're supposed to have sex with had had their ribs uh, cheese grated so the lung sticks to it. And it can leak out on you during <laughs> right, sex. Right. <laughs> oh, look at that. What I'll happened? just tape out a goodie. What happened? You typed goody? Goody. What? It's my baby. Oh. <sighs> my girl. So then, you know what took so long? Like why there was a delay? Huh? You know why there was a delay? <laughs> why? Because during all this whole thing, she's been given blood. Taken, they take blood. They take urine. They take uh, uh, it tests of everything. Uh, you know, checking for uh, everything. They wheel her in for the operation and look at the chart and go, oh, we never gave her a pregnancy test. And she goes, don't worry about that. I'm not pregnant. And uh, no, she wasn't. But they, they had to give her a pregnancy test before she went in and, and got the uh, operation done. So it's sitting another hour waiting. But oh, we'll get that pregnancy test right away because this is top priority and we want to make sure you get out of here quickly and back to the recovery room. Because this is a hospital and people have to be taken care of. <laughs> Holy mother of God. Hey, I think we got a good combo here. You talk really oh. slow and then my sick laugh. It, it's, oh. probably, it's probably it, creeping people out out, out there. It, it, it is creepy. Damn, I got to smoke some more pot to listen to this. <laughs> Very meticulous. <laughs> So she's in Wait, there. A pregnancy test takes seconds, though. It's yeah. a little not in a hospital. Just gonna see a strip turn blue or whatever it is. Blue, pink. No, what they is don't. It? What do you think they use that store bought crap? Why not? They take a, a blood sample and use that. They give it a kick to the abdomen and see if anything pops out. <laughs> <laughs> Just stand yes. over this white tarp. There it is. <laughs> we have one stewed tomato. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, oh, boy. All right. Sorry. <laughs> That's the test. Kick, and then the doctor cups his ear and listens for the kerplunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, they did that, and uh, more time goes by, and then a doctor comes by. A uh, woman doctor comes by and she looks in the room because I would I didn't want to be in the room with the families and stuff sure. like that. So I'm standing outside the door, kind of leaning against the wall, screwing around with the iPhone. You know, I got a signal, so I was able to go on the web and just scroll around. And uh, she goes, "Oh, Mr. Kumia," I was like, "Yes," and she goes, "Okay, uh, everything went fine." We uh, took the gallbladder out. We were able to do laparoscopic surgery. Which is good, you know. You know they don't take the machete and uh, oh, slice good. open her uh, abdomen. They poke a few tiny holes. They do something. They take three these or four little holes. Right? It's not even a hole. It's a little incision with these little micro stitches, and they you don't even see scars. And then uh, the belly button. They go inside the belly button and cut that, and then stick something in there. They put a camera in the other hole there, and and they kind of like peek around. And then they pull the gallbladder out of the belly button like alien. Nice. <laughs> like that Mexican witch doctor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah they do, they're pressing and pull a cotton ball with blood on it. How do they untie, cured. How do they untie the belly button? You don't untie it. It's just there. Look at your belly button. It's tied. God, she's got an Indy. <laughs> It'd be impossible an Audi. Just squeeze it like a zit. <laughs> but they, uh, yeah, they, they took it right out of there. Maybe she has an Audi now because that's the gallbladder. No, I saw it. I was actually able to look at yeah, the gallbladder's hanging out. Hi, baby. Ah! Wait, what'd you say? I was able to look. 
At what? At uh, the incisions and oh. the uh, thing, because they were oh. just covered up with like this clear little band aid. I thought you were able they to were, watch the surgery. Or no, something. they were they're just like three little little band aids, hey, like can nothing. I, can I? Uh, there's an observation coming in. Oh, of course, we like when the audience uh, participates. Th- there's an observation coming in. Uh, I, this guy didn't leave his name, unfortunately, uh, but he's noticing that you're you're a different person. He goes, Aunt, you're a fag. If Jennifer, which is uh, Aunt's ex-wife, yeah. sorry to bring that up, Aunt, uh, was in surgery, you would have been in a hot tub with a chick with braces. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know if I can deny that. I really don't know. There's a lot more concern these days. The old days, you would have been like, ah, oh, only when you need a ride oh, home, there. sweetie. Yeah. You should have been the obnoxious boyfriend screaming that you better not have scarring or you're not going to be able to F. <laughs> better not be any scarring. Take care of that. And hey, Doc, how about an extra stitch? Oh, wait a minute. That's for the pregnancy. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, what time was the surgery? People bet out there. Finally uh, got to it at uh, 3.30. Oh, that's not bad. That's when it was. But she was supposed to be in early. Right. Like they were like, hey, we could take you early. So they wheeled her down there at about 2.15. So I'm like, all right, great. Going to get this done with early. And didn't start until uh, an hour later or so, or an hour and uh, 15 minutes. But then... Uh, uh, they go, okay, you could see her in recovery. Mm-hmm. And recovery is always fun because the person is so effed up. They give them, you know, the drugs, and she's like, Hi, how are you doing? <sighs> I, everything went fine. I woke <laughs> up. I didn't know who anybody was. <laughs> I was like, that's because they're doctors, and you don't know them. <laughs> it's not the drugs. You just don't know them. We we don't hang out with doctors. <laughs> We've never seen these people oh, before in our lives. I was scared because I didn't know who anybody was. I, and then all of a sudden, they'll be like, well, they took the... Th- <laughs> <laughs> Like, ba- baby, are you sleeping? Oh, baby, hi. Yeah, I was just here. You, know, you all of a sudden got Alzheimer's yeah. for a second. It's, hold my hand. Oh, that's a nice icy hand. That's, Yuck. I can't really talk. My my throat is so dry. Ask if I can have some water because I'm... <laughs> <laughs> And then the nurse comes up. Oh, we'll get her some water right away. <laughs> Any second now, there'll be plenty of water for your <laughs> She's thirsty. <laughs> Hi, baby. Ah, number three. You're up a third time. Oh, the guy. And the nurse comes up. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm just going to give her a little something for the pain. Yeah. Because I thought that's what she had. Yeah, we just can't give her a little more because it's got some very tender tummy and stuff. And they inject her with something, and she's just, that was the same stuff they go. <laughs> <laughs> she's out. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> We're going to wheel her up to the room in about an hour so you can see her then. So I go up to the room, and I'm just lounging around up there watching TV. And finally, they brought her up about an hour later, and she's fine. Uh, fine and dandy. As a matter of fact, her uh, the last uh, uh, text that just just came in moments ago. They are still planning to send me home uh, today, so they're sending her home uh, this morning. And my answer was goody, goody. goody. I answer goody. I didn't have time for goody, goody gum drops. Well, you will because we're going to take a break. Oh, good. But I'll find Norton's out what time. Face right now, looking at you. But Anthony, Why? Anthony hasn't slept goody. in like three days. My the sleep is, but I and I've slept on like chairs well you can't sleep in a chair there was one thing she had to go for one of the tests uh, uh saturday or uh sunday where they uh do say they make her drink some radioactive stuff and then they uh put some scanner over for two hours and i'm sitting in this chair and the room is freezing cold to keep the equipment cold so i'm covered with hospital blankets in a chair and it's a regular chair a hard surface chair and i'm turning trying to get comfortable in this thing leaning my head on the back of a chair you know how like your normal office chair is kind of soft on the top so you can actually lean your head there and maybe catch some cushioning this was a slice of wood about a quarter inch thick that was carving into the side of my skull were you sick of saying 
I'm not the patient. <laughs> I'm not the patient. I just look horrible. Stop trying to wheel me away. I'm not the patient. Stop it. Hey, Stephen S. from Bayshore, did Ann take the gallbladder home as a tasty treat for Jack-Jack? <laughs> Little Jack-Jack. <laughs> no, it was full of marbles. And Hector from Georgia, the reason the surgery took so long was her parents needed to sign her permission. It's like <laughs> consent form. <laughs> Wait, my thing is, no. is how, if they squeeze, if the gallbladder stones are hard, <laughs> how do they have to squeeze it out through that little laparoscopic <laughs> laparoscopic surgery well uh, I'm sure it stretches open oh, a little bit and then they can uh, they can hack it up if need be and kind of you know take it out in pieces it's not like I can, I'm gonna save it like a little sack well the stones aren't that the, the, the stones aren't that big in the gallbladder. no no, no your they're kidney not that stones big. get pretty big they're not that big but uh, they, they, it was like full of the little gall stones and, Could, and if they clog up one of the little Ducts to one of the tubes that are in there. That's what the problem. Make one is. of those Indian uh, medicine bags. Yes, medicine bag. Oh. Out of it. <laughs> you blow it up and harden it and make it a maraca. Could you, <laughs> could you keep it if you wanted to? No, they don't let you keep biohazardous waste anymore in the hospitals. Go figure. And the doctors don't smoke in the hallways anymore, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> what year is this? We got Lifetime movies in front of us. These are just the movies that start with the letter A. Yeah, because uh, Lifetime is known for their. Uh, something. Movies. Mm. It's always, uh, whatever. Very uh, dramatic. Well, how about this? A child's cry for where's, help. Where's our Lifetime movie? Music. Lifetime. A child's cry for help on a very special Lifetime. A dad for Christmas. That must have been a good one. <laughs> yeah. A daughter's conviction. Uh-oh. A face to kill for. A father's choice. A friend's betrayal. A job to kill for. This is the same titles. Uncreative asses over there. A killer upstairs. A little thing called murder. <laughs> A lover's revenge. A nightmare come true, a piece of my heart, a touch of hope, a vow to kill. A woman hunted, abduction, abducted, all she wants for Christmas. Alone with a stranger, ambulance girl, wow. <laughs> an unfinished affair, any mother's son, as time runs out, awake to danger. A child's wish, a crime of passion, a deadly vision, a face to die for, a family lost, a father for Britney, a friendship to die for. They wait, love wait, that wait, to wait. die for thing. I gotta slow you down. A father for Britney. Now that one sounds hot. Yeah, I like that one. You're my new daddy. <laughs> a killer within, a kiss so deadly, a life interrupted, a long way home, a perfect murder. A town without Christmas. The town you live in, Anthony. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A town with a lot of menorahs. <laughs> I like a town without Christmas. Abduction. A father's love. Hmm. Above suspicion. American tragedy. An unexpected love. And never let her go. Another woman's husband. At the mercy of a stranger. Um, the worst is the last one. Aurora Borealis. Isn't that the thing with the lights? Yeah, yeah it's a light a thing. movie. I don't know. I'm you missed sure it involves some guy who looked like cool and like a good boyfriend that she went and told her girlfriends that he was a great guy and then halfway through he like punched her face and all she could see when she opened her eyes was stars and the aurora borealis <laughs> hey you missed one by the way oh which one your baby is black <laughs> i think that was a lifetime movie was it <laughs> can we play the trailer we haven't played this in a while that sounds like it could be a lifetime movie yeah. your baby is black is black Nothing you have ever seen before. A real trailer. And nothing you have ever heard before will prepare you for the shock of... <laughs> My baby is black. Now, the motion picture screen reaches its full maturity in this dramatic, bold story never before told on the screen. 
Sometimes I'm a bad boy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 My baby <laughs> is black. <laughs> All right. Hey. You know, the, the, uh, the, yeah. I don't want to blow it, but I know Lifetime was interested in doing some movies about our staff. Really? They certainly were. And uh, you got a few of those? What no, was that? I, I just, I, I heard one. I, I heard oh, one. Oh, okay. Well, it could uh, start something. I mean, the instant feedback, they're looking for something to do I don't, today. I don't know who this is for, but yeah. they, they're doing one. They, they said, a car battery for fat boy. <laughs> 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 well, uh, the Steve C story is coming in from Stephen S. from Bayshore. A bear in chaps. <laughs> <laughs> a C for Steve C. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a boy. boyfriend, a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> a car crash. <laughs> there goes Holiday. He's on the track. He's at the wall. She's gone. The meth man delivered. No. What are they saying? I was only joking. No. No. Oh my, I'm telling you something. How did that not go in? That wasn't even close. That was a whiff. Three strikes. I didn't even connect. <laughs> ah, you're tired, though. I don't know. I thought, uh... And maybe if someone else would have said it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that was yeah, the problem. Yeah, but you said it about yourself. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, no. And then I you was... clicked your heels together. Maybe I was talking about somebody else. <laughs> No, you got to start with ah. Uh. I got to help out the instant feedback. You got to start with ah. Uh. Although, Kevin, okay, from Marblehead Mass, my baby is Canadian. The Rich Voss story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's one. A salad forgotten. <laughs> you got you to gotta guess who they're for. Puffy from Wag Bag. A fish stick for Sam. <laughs> a special boy Jason. wants nothing more than a fish stick. Jason from Rye. A bottle of Jack for Danny. <laughs> a neck pouch full of fish. <laughs> yeah. I apologize, but I am going to have to miss the uh, second portion of the program. I have to go pick up my gal. What's going on? Where she's she? going home. Ooh. Right away? Yeah. Well, it takes me an hour to get there. But she's ready to go right and now. And uh, they check out. Surgery. That's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. Can I use your kazoo? Uh, no. Make right. sure the kazoo and all my things that my mouth goes on get sterilized and packed away like they usually do. How about this, baby? <laughs> oh, you keep that filthy dirty, Jim. I love it that way. Sure, it smells like mushrooms, wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll do, uh, we'll fool around a little bit next. Fool around. Yeah, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll call in. How about you call in uh, from your car? That's always I'll fun. call in from my car and you can listen to me drive home. That's always good. We'll do that next. Give me the hotline number. All right. <laughs> I, my friend, uh, she does porn and... Uh, I forget what. In, oh, is he on the other phone? Yeah, we've been trying to get to him for oh, hi, five Anthony. minutes. Sorry, dude. Anthony. I, I was just listening to the conversation, and when the, when that when those movies are uh, are real and not movies, it's called a home invasion. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I, I don't like Anthony. Already missed. <laughs> seat being empty. That's weird. Okay. Hey, Anthony. Yeah. Ant. We're doing a little, uh, everyone's moving up a chair here. Uh, Jimmy, why don't you move over to Anthony's? All right. Oh. Louie, why don't you move over to Jimmy's uh, spot? And Bob, okay. why don't you go to the couch? I'm going to have to... Oh, Bob. <laughs> go to the couch, Bobby. All right. Nice talking to you. <laughs> Fucking, if, I had, if I had Anthony's button, I'd push it right now. <laughs> Already. Someone's Tracy's fucking up the program. Look at this idiot. No, no, no. You fucked up. I get to go. Asshole. What? I Are fucking you? hate New York this time, driving. Why? Speaking of, uh, th this is not acting. This is Anthony every day of his life driving home. Anthony, where are you? This fucking guy, I'm on Van Damme. And this right. dumb fucker was trying to make a left turn, so he blocks the entire lane that I'm in uh, by, by trying to make a left turn. Just Nobody likes a tattletale except, of course, me. Oh, my God, no. Can you, can you get next to him and uh, get him to talk on the air? Oh, like, he already can... the turn. I, I'll oh, okay. get people to yell, believe me. I get people yelling at me all the time. The savage fucking uh, drivers that drive these uh, these uh, black cars. The, right. The, the, the taxing and limousine service. Uh, not the yellow cabs, but the black car drivers. Yeah. They are the town cars. Horrid drivers. When, when they get shot and they are found slumped over a wheel, I laugh. Because I cannot stand them. They, They're they, way they, worse than cabs. Uh, Fucking paperwork. 
They're filling out paperwork, and the light's green. It's an arrow. There's a gap of five cars in front of them, and I missed the light because this guy is fucking filling out. I had to go to blah, 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 blah. Now those Stop whining. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Jimmy's working your buttons. <laughs> <laughs> audience right now if Jimmy has that sound effects machine. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a long, long hour and a half. But that, uh, well, dude, are, are, are you are you still in the actual intersection? No, I got past that. Dude, I don't sit and fucking, I don't sit there like, what do I like do? Like discipline. <laughs> I'm sidewalking it. I do whatever it takes to get around fucking assholes. I break the... <laughs> I am above the law. I don't pay attention to lights. I don't yep. pay attention to speed limits. Yep. Hey, why is your phone crapping out? You know what's weird? Like, Anthony was just here 20 minutes ago in a very happy uh, mood considering that you know, his <laughs> chick went through some, the, some minor surgery. Now he's mm -hmm. in his car, and this is like... Your whole mood has changed, sir. Outside it, of the Holland Tunnel, it, miserable. It, yeah. This fucking... These New York and Jersey cocksuckers that have no concept that there are other people on the road that want to get somewhere. Like, well, I you know, know, you know, it's you know, it's them. You know, it's them. You are never to blame. <laughs> oh my God, Jimmy. Jesus, that's <laughs> terrible. Like, no one has anywhere to be. They're just out here to fuck with me. Why don't they drive fast? How come if they... Do they ever look at the flashing walk-don't-walk walk sign and realize that light's going to turn fucking uh, red in a minute or in a couple of seconds? Why don't I get through so that the guy behind me maybe could get through too? No, but they leave 18 car lengths in front of them, and the second it turns yellow, they, sit, they hit the gas, and, and they get through and I get stuck. Why don't they... Silence, the whippersnapper! What? Yeah. Go ahead, Ant. Hit the gas earlier, and we can all get through. But these boring. <laughs> oh, got a boring. I hit the wrong button. No, I meant to hit. Uh, how do I, I switch banks on this fucking thing? No one's helping me. I'm, I was helping trying to hit, I was trying to hit what? What? That was it. Very complicated. <laughs> what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Now, now here we go. We get on the expressway, and of course, on this on ramp that's as long as a runway, you have to do twenty miles an hour because ah! uh, no one's on the highway. Oh, here we go. You here know, this go. is like, this is like, um, this is like your traffic report. Yeah. It's an irritated fucking guy right. who hates people. Let's see what's going on on the roads. These motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Louis, we used to tape ourselves uh, coming to work. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was some. Of the, it was a lot of fun. Dude, you want to beep your horn? <laughs> I like then they'll the move. <laughs> Anthony. You fucking, you fucking Jersey cunt. This guy looks at me. He thinks he's going to be going fast with me. He wanted to cut in front of me. I didn't let him. And now he's looking at me like I'm a fucking douchebag. You fucking, F oh, if I could use racial epithets. Lean out the window and go. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> now he's nowhere to be found. Come on, come on, douchebag. Dude, Look, you, you won't let Dude, you gotta relax. You have a heart attack. Just relax, man. Just tell the guy just to relax and try the wine. <laughs> <laughs> have a drink together. Uh, I'm in the I'm I'm in I'm in the uh, white painted like part where you're not supposed to be. There we go. Nope. Stay there. There we go. I don't like people that can come up on their ass and right when you just have to go around and they decide it's time to get out of the way. Well, that scared me. I heard a siren. I thought I was being pulled over. <laughs> So the other guy's bothering you, right? He stinks, and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, never... we, we lost you. What? We lost you. We lost you for a second. Oh, I'm still here. I said I'm never around the problem long. I yell, and then I'm I'm 80 miles an hour past them. You just, you just, you, after someone fucks over, you just kind of go. Go ahead, go and leave, leave. I pardon you. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you that they're fucking. You want this dude? They're driving expensive cars. Goddamn rich cunt. <laughs> 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 so childish. This is fucking rules. Hey, how, is, is there a lot of cars out there? At what do we got going on? Uh, yeah, it, it's packed. Uh, watch yeah. yourselves in. That could be a problem. Yeah. Uh, 
But uh, I, I'm see, I seem to be moving along at a pretty good pace right now. They I seem a little more relaxed. You're on your way. Are you yeah, in the tunnel yet? Way. Uh, I'm okay, except for these cabs that are in the left lane for no reason, doing, let's see, 50 miles an hour. We're on the expressway, 70 at least. And they get this attitude like, I'm going fast enough. No, you're not. Look how close I am to you. Yeah, no, if what there's somebody mean? behind you that's close to your bumper, you're not going fast enough. Yeah. Oh, oh could you get out of the way? Holy Jesus, fuck. Get Stop, out of whining. The <laughs> Stop whining. Stop oh, whining. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> fuck you, Hulk. Schwarzenegger. <laughs> 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 oh, did you see that jerk? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dude, well, you know what? You 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 you, you gotta relax, dude. You're in traffic. You just you know. Act like wherever you are, that's the place to be. <laughs> <laughs> that's the place to be. And I'm not in traffic. I'm in like cars that don't know to get the fuck out of the left lane. You Boring. dick. Shut up. I I this cab has got to move. <laughs> you dick. I love this button. <laughs> I don't have to I say anything. Dick. Yeah, you know what I'm afraid of? Jimmy is not going to want to give that up. I don't already. Hey. Yeah, it sucks. This sucks. He was I calling, fucking he, love this machine. And he was calling the guy in your way a dick, by the yeah, way. Yeah, not you. Not you. Uh, we'll give, him, we'll give uh, him a machine with one button that works. Just one. One lousy button we'll give him. <laughs> Why not? Just call... I, I, I actually want my own machine. I think I can really contribute. No. I know how to do this. Thank God. No. Penis. Show. Hey, uh... Jimmy, um, Jimmy's like kind of sitting at your seat, amp. He's also yeah. fiddling with your your whistles and stuff. No, don't yeah. fiddle. I swear, <laughs> I'm gonna just have to call new ones, and I won't use not, them until I get dude. Done. I'm dude. I'm not doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait. Unless you well, what, what, what? what do you need? <laughs> just make sure the girl doesn't come in. Oh, all right. Uh oh. Oh, your no. bell is gonna get rung um, oh, by his little God. little and, Willie oh. bell ringer. Oh, he's, oh. Oh. he's ringing the bell. Oh. He's ringing the bell with his penis, Anthony. He's ringing the bell. I with couldn't. His I couldn't stop head. him. His big uh, mushroom head was uh, pounding down on your bell. He just checked into the hotel with his cock. <laughs> oh no! He just paged a bellboy with his panacea. Anthony, use it with a fart. Huh? No, I, I didn't. Oh, dude, you got to make the whistle blow by uh, using a fart. No, I'm not. I, I don't have to fart. <laughs> well, gonna... us. Uh, Hey, Roller let it case. be known that, hold on, let it be known that Whistle's Steve going in the just asshole. handed Jimmy the, the whistle. Oh. The whistle is in his asshole. Oh. The whistle's in his ass, uh, Anthony. I, uh, I, I try to he's stop gonna make it whistle. Yeah. Make it whistle. He's going to try to make it whistle. Let's it's, go. It's roller skating time, everybody. I don't have to. I'm not going to make it whistle. Make it whistle. Why not? Well, we're I taking guess. pictures of Anthony's whistle and Jimmy's butt crack. Oh, God. Dude, oh, you can God. reuse this. Oh, you can hear the little balls. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just dropped it out of his ass without using his hands. Oh. Uh, oh, it's now on the couch. Can you <laughs> fart hard enough to ring that bell? I wonder. Like no, I can't. I, I don't have to cut a gasser at all. Actually, no. no. Can you shit that and let it drop on top of the bell? Oh, so what's that? What's that, Ant? Does he have a gasser that can blow the whistle? No, okay. I was gonna try that, but I, I didn't. So for myself. <laughs> uh, what if you use the horn to, with the bubble end there and blow air into your asshole? With that horn. And see if your eyes bulge out. Yeah. And see if it farts back out again. Our anus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to mess with that because that's expensive. What is? I don't want to fuck with this bullhorn. Oh, bull yeah. Don't, don't mess with the bullhorn. Just the, just the bell. Yeah. Just the bell. Here. Will, right. Believe me, I will send out a lowly intern and make him get me new everything. Uh, we already knew that, but we figured it would be fun uh, for five minutes for the show. Uh, <laughs> uh, Wait, what is he doing? He's putting his balls inside <laughs> Wait, of what? the bell of that horn. <laughs> he's ringing the. He's blowing the horn onto his balls. <laughs> he's, he's got his two peaches <laughs> that, stuffed in your horn. <laughs> stuffed in. Like a couple of hairy melons in a tuba. Uh, that, was, that was almost like a cartoon. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's how oh. bugs would stop the, the guy from beeping the horn. There you go. All right. Well, you might want to throw that on the couch. I though. freed it up. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it 
fall away. It gets thrown <laughs> away. Well, you can reuse. You should reuse that whistle, though. That'd be a fucking great moment. Oh, you can sell that on eBay. That horn. It's had your balls in it. When I put it in my mouth and say how familiar it tastes. <laughs> 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 All right, and how's the ride? Good. Uh, yeah, we're we're doing good. I I could just sit here and you know you guys do a show. I'll chime in. <laughs> All right. Food. <laughs> All right. I guess we lost Ann. I think he's at a hospital right now. So. All right. Why don't we take a break? I'm doing good with these buttons, I think. You're terrific. And if you knew the gasser, I just passed up. Oh, uh, God. I don't know it. I didn't do it. Dude. Well, no, I'm in a fucking, second. Uh, dude, my <laughs> lungs are processing your right shit. My lungs are taking particles of your shit and dispersing them into my bloodstream, into my brain. So. Atta boy. You're welcome. Yep. All right, this <laughs> station's up. running fine. Hey, uh, this was made for you, Jimmy. On the next Opie and Anthony show, Opie and Anthony face their toughest challenge yet. Hey, this is uh, Jim Norton. Listen as one man describes an addiction. Wherever there were cocks, there was me. <laughs> and how he went from one cock to many. I was taking a hundred a night. What do you think of them apples? Then you'll hear a horrifying <laughs> tale of a bukkake party gone wrong. Blurka, 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 blurka. <laughs> All over my fat, colorless stomach. I can't tell where the cum ends and my skin begins. Blurka, blurka, blurka. Plus, an ending you won't want to miss. That's right. I say a couple of men do some doc and settle this. It all happens on the next Opie and Anthony show. Man, that's not bad, man. Who did <laughs> that, Derek? Good. Derek did that. That's a good job right there. That's pretty good stuff. <laughs> all right. I we would got, watch that movie. We got Louis C.K. We got Bob Kelly. We got uh, Jimmy. Nothing. <laughs> Ooh. I like you on the buttons. You finally used it correctly. I'm enjoying the buttons. Um, all right. We'll uh, regroup. You we'll look continue. like a button. It's Opie Do I? Anthony. <laughs> I can just... Hey, and how, how's things? How's things? Ah, things. People are asking for an update on the instant feedback. You left, uh, you left there early yesterday to get your girl uh, uh, out of prison. Uh, <laughs> well, no, no. Well, she's, uh, she had a gallbladder taken out, and uh, it was in the hospital. I uh, got out yesterday to get her out of there, you know, because she was uh, being discharged. Yeah. And uh, right before she's ready to get out, uh, stabbing pain. Stabbing pain. So they uh, give her some uh, morphine. I think she's going to be a morphine addict, <laughs> by the way. I think I'm, I'm going to have a morphine addict girlfriend. At least she won't be loud. That's nice. <laughs> That's <laughs> Try to get my girlfriend hooked on morphine. <laughs> Throw her on a couch somewhere <laughs> and let her just drool. Better that than coke. Hey, I'm going to clean up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Here, have some morphine. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, stabbing pain. So they take her up to uh, test out uh, and take a look, cat scan things, look around, and it just takes all night. So again... This is becoming a thing. All night. You, you realize this started Saturday? Uh, well, Sunday morning. Sunday morning, late yeah. Saturday. Yeah, Sunday morning. So so Sunday, it was, uh, all right. they made sure everything was okay, and they said because when they do that laparoscopic yeah. surgery so they don't have to leave a big hatchet wound, mm -hmm. uh, they have to put one thing they put in there, pumps your abdomen up with air. goes like, <laughs> so that they could take a peek around and find things in there. You know, find the gallbladder and take it out. What and do you mean? Blow, it blows everything apart just a little it bit? It blows your, your belly up to the point where you look pregnant. It just goes, whoosh, fills you full of air. Yeah. So that it leaves a, a layer, a gap right. between your organs and the uh, muscle and uh, skin and everything so they could look around. It makes it easier around. to look around, sure. Yeah, yeah it's like looking Things around are separate in there. a little bit. Yep. And then... Uh, they uh, take everything out and they, they sew, sew up the little, the very, very little uh, uh, incisions. Mm -hmm. And then uh, yesterday, fine and dandy, ready to check out, just waiting for the paperwork to be done. And she goes, wow, stabbing pain right down in her uh, her uh, right side where the whole thing was done and up, up uh, onto her shoulder hurt and everything. So the doctors come in and uh, start, you know, they do that push thing where it's just hurting like hell. And... Um, Take her up for CAT scans and another test of this and that. Well, this went into, you know, the early wee hours of the morning. I was there the, the entire day trying to sleep in two what amounts to fifth graders' school chairs pushed together front to front with a blanket over me curled up in a position I can't even describe. The, the, the pain of that alone... I could sympathize. Uh, and they kept her again overnight. So I, you know, went home. And again, I, I cannot wake myself up. I realize I can't get up by myself. 
I set two alarms, and uh, d- during some sleepwalking event, I shut them off. <laughs> and I wake up and go, up, oh, hi, fan. Yeah, well, he's not next to me sleeping. I'm right, right. <laughs> still trying to make that happen. But uh, I, I call him and uh, tell him, I'm going to be late again. Going to be late. So I showed up late, and she's still in the hospital. I just got a text saying she's getting out today. All tests were negative for anything. Uh, they gave her some Dilaudid. What is that? That stuff? It's, a, it's some kick-ass-like drug. When my mother and Sal, on two separate occasions, my mother went in for something, some type of, uh, I don't know, uh, when a woman gets old surgery, uh, and, and Sal went in for something, and they gave them both uh, Dilaudid at some point. And they lost their minds. Where, where, at each each time one of them had it, the other one thought they had the one that had the uh, the drug got Alzheimer's. Sal was walking around uh, asking for people that he hadn't seen in years. Oh boy! And my mother was walking around thinking she was in a casino. <laughs> She's in the hospital, and they're on the drug in the a same casino, time? and she thought that people were coming in to have sex with her. <laughs> They weren't. It wasn't the same time. It was two different occasions, but they had each gotten the same medicine. It would have been hilarious if it was happening at the same time, man. She was, uh, my mother was like out of her mind. She thought she was in a casino. For how long did she have to be on this? Uh, after the one time, that was it. Oh, oh. Like, like Sal went there and said, no, no <laughs> don't give her that. Ro can't take that. I was on Delorted once. I went crazy. I couldn't remember anything. He's talking about people that he went to, was in the Navy with. Oh, boy. Jesus. Oh, boy. We've been gone for many, many years, right? Uh, what? Talking, yeah. He yeah. was talking about dead people? All kinds of stuff. He was talking about dead people because he was actually seeing the dead people. Yeah. And my mother was under the impression that uh, people were trying to have sex with her. Maybe they were. How hot Maybe is that? some of the nurses, some of the male nurses were in there with a pillow and then realized, hey, let me knock one off first. <laughs> you got to admit that the, that's kind of hot, Ant. No, it isn't. It's really hot taking no, on your mom. My drugged mother in a hospital it's, with some n- some a nurse trying to have kinda, sex with her. Kind of hot. It's not hot. She's in a casino and people are trying to have sex with her. I, She's in a casino. I asked her, how'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> did you hit? <laughs> and, and did the, the hospital, you know, uh, work on that slow time again? Everything was just uh, moving in slow motion. Oh, or- it just doesn't feel, and especially when you, your chick is in pain like that, she's just like doubled over, screaming like, ow! And and, and like, uh, could she just get something here? What's the what's the protocol for getting someone who's is, is screaming in pain? You yell medic uh, on a battlefield and someone will come by and jab you with some uh, morphine. Yeah. Go just something, and they're like, "Okay, we have to check with our doctor first, and then once we check with the doctor, it won't be long before he comes in and checks and does the paperwork, and before you know it, she'll be pain free." <laughs> That's not what you want to hear. This will take only a matter of days. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. Can I ask the obvious? Yeah. Uh, one good fart. Is she all right? No. See, that's what I thought. Maybe a Coke. But it's not in that part. Maybe a ginger ale something. It's not in that part. It's in her abdomen. One, in the one nice burp abdomen or fart. cavity. Clear her out. Hug her really tight. Hug her tight and let really the air a tight come out. hug and then a nice burp or a gas. No, run. it's not in that. See, see, your 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 digestive system goes from your mouth to your you know where where it comes out, and that's where all the gas would build up. It's in the abdomen cavity around all that stuff. So it's not in the intestines. It's outside of them, in between like the intestines and your abdominal wall. So whenever see your muscles need blood. You ever get a cramp? You know what that is? your muscles not getting blood no what is it it's also a bit of dehydration my friend well that's just it it's not getting where do, where do you think muscles get the the liquid i think there's still blood in there no no not enough am i learning something when today? when muscles don't have blood they right. cramp yeah they cramp up well when you do a lot of like working out and you sweat a lot and you get crampy it's yeah because uh, your muscles need a little more water they need all the I stuff say water, that, you say blood but the water's liquid. in the blood like it's the stuff that's in blood there's a lot of stuff in blood. Your muscles need it. Right. If they don't get it, they cramp up. I got gotcha. you. So when, when a pocket of air hits a muscle, 
it's not getting the blood it needs. There's air getting in between the fibers of the muscle. So it cramps up. Ugh. And that's what happens. And uh, she was just like, oh, in utter pain. And no, she is not. I'm not making excuses. She's not back in the loony bin. <laughs> People are going, dude, I think he's lying and she's back in the loony bin. <laughs> she's not you, guys loony need, bin. you guys need a reality show. Let's be honest with each other here. <laughs> I don't know. It would be it would be like months of boredom I, and then like one really cool uh uh, thing to watch for I, people to watch. I'm at the point I can't wait for Monday shows because I know you're going to have some crazy ass story from the weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mondays yeah. Are, are becoming the best day to listen to the Opie and Anthony oh. show because of the Anthony uh, adventures. Yeah, it's just the gambling and gallbladders and who knows what these else the hell is going on. Things just happen. Hate it. All right. So uh, out today. Now, obviously, you're yeah. not going down to Washington with us when we leave. Not with you guys. I got to drive back to, uh, out to Long Island. Are and, you going to make uh, it down there? Get our, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make it down there. I, I, I got no choice in the matter. You just can't drive. I'm an employee. Decent, you got to fly or take a train. I can't fly. I'm a human. All right, let me know. Of aircraft. Let's go to Nathan in California. Nathan, what's up? Hey, buddies. What's going on? Hey, hey Nathan. Nathan. Hey. So, uh, I had my appendix out a couple of weeks ago, and, uh, God, this is embarrassing. So, I'm in the recovery room, you know, they, they wake me up, oh, hi, how are you? And, uh, the, you know, the lovey feelies and everything, and this guy is, uh, standing there, he's about 6'2", 225, and, uh, making sure I feel all right, and he's, he's, oh, you need anything? I was like, I'm really thirsty. And so he's, uh, he's feeding me ice chips for the next hour and a half that old gag and uh oh it, i i you know I, I remember the entire thing but I, I just could not comprehend how gay it was at <laughs> the time. it was just terrible well ice chips a nothing, guy nothing. feeding you ice chips <laughs> they're, they're <laughs> much gayer than that that's pretty gay but, but you know what? used to feed them to you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so just just put hold this in your mouth it'll, they'll melt Trust me. <laughs> melt in your mouth <laughs> That's yeah, not ice. Was like, what is this I ice made from seawater? <laughs> <laughs> what, Nathan? Just, just terrible. I, I, you know, I'm gonna go kill myself now. <laughs> well, don't what? do that. Hey, you had your appendix uh, out. Mine burst. At least you're alive. Oh, yeah. See, I was seven. I was a sick boy. Yeah. Seven, little seven-year-old Jimmy. Yeah. Doctor Halavopoulos had to go in and fish out my appendix. He saved my what life. What was left of it? Yeah. As it exploded, blew it apart. Uh, we uh, we got to get out of here. We got to. Yeah. Some of us got a train to catch. Where are you? When are you gonna make it down there? Man? I'll make it. I got to go back. Uh, you know, out there, check up on things. And I want to say, what's up to Anthony, my pal? Hi. Uh, Anthony's adventure continues. Oh. Th this adventure started, I believe, early Sunday morning. Yeah, I, I think it's finally like it's gonna it's in gonna, perspective now. It's it's, it's, it's gonna settle down. Yeah, I think I I might finally I I might get some sleep at some point. I I, uh, I apologize for laughing openly at you yesterday. Oh. I think it made our promo for for our New York station. But uh, right after the show, uh, Anthony gets a a, a text from Master Poe. And Master Poe is informing Anthony that he's got a flat tire. This is this is all I needed on his brand new Escalade, flat tire. That's the least of it, of his worries. Or, or the, the last second thing flat, you need it. by the way. The, what really? It's the second flat, same tire. I think that goofball that fixed it uh, didn't do a good job. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> so I'm texting Poe and I'm like, because last time I got the flat, it wasn't that bad. It's like you are low on air and you could tell, but I could get home to get it fixed. And uh, he comes pulling around the corner, and I'm looking at the wheel, and I'm texting him. I go, is there enough air for me to get home? He goes, I don't think so. So I look at the tire. It is more flatter than any flat tire I've ever seen flat in my life. <laughs> there was no air in it. The rim was flat. Yeah, so it for, was that flat. So for him to say, I don't think so, you know, he's... Uh, yeah. He's, I don't think so. Let's be honest. He's kind of stupid. <laughs> so, well, geez. He's a stupid man, but he he could he could kill you with a toothpick. I I get it. He's a killer, trained killer. But uh, I start openly laughing on the sidewalk. I'm sorry, but I oh. I'm, I'm really into that that dark humor. I'm like, this is the last thing this guy needed. Oh, you saw the flash? Oh my god! And I I start laughing, and then I'm like, oh dude, I'm really sorry. I know you're going through hell this week. Fuck I had to get out of but there. That's, that's funny. It's like Murphy's Law is happening to Anthony. Yeah, my my ch my chick was in the hospital getting uh, her gallbladder taken out yeah 
And then, uh, you know, I got to get out of there. And you haven't slept in days. And all I haven't of a sudden, slept all in you, days. All you wanted was to jump in your car and get the hell out of uh, the city. Get the hell out of here. Because I had to get her out of the hospital right. so we can get here. Right. That was the problem. You guys were already on your way here. And I still had to go out to Long Island, pick her up from the hospital, and uh, uh, start my journey. Right. So the first thing that happens is Poe comes pulling up with the flat tire. So I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. So Kenny's there, and, and Poe's there, and, and they're nice enough to begin the procedure of changing my flat tire. Well, the, the best part was Master Poe trying to uh, parallel park in your brand yeah, new That's Escalade, how it started. Pretty much hitting a delivery truck or the ramp of a delivery truck, going over like chains. He had, he, he had no idea what was going on. He was going up on the curb. Then he finally gets it in a spot right in a huge puddle of dirty New York City water. Gutter water. Gutter water. And 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 we're, we're, I'm laughing even harder because I'm like, we gotta change this tire, or somebody has to. You, how are you, how are you gonna change a tire that's halfway uh, in this mucky water? You gotta give the guy credit. He laid down right in that muck gutter water and did what he had to do. Did well, he? Yeah, I called up. You know, I called up the uh, the uh, people. You know, on Star, how may we help you? Uh, yeah, I got a flat tire. Oh, are you okay? Are you on the side of the road? Are you in danger? Is there a problem? Cut the questions. Don't make everything I, I say sound like the airbags went off and there's dead children everywhere. It's a flat tire. Jesus. The Unstar people are panicky peats. They should be able to fix your uh, flat tire through the satellite. Yeah, they should be able to. You know how they could like unlock your doors? Unlock the doors, everything. How great would that be? Why is Kenny laughing? He's talking through I'm the I'm still microphone. talking through the microphone yeah. like I'm talking, because I'm still talking to OnStar. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And and, and I was like, uh, yeah, <laughs> well, I got to get uh, I gotta get uh, my tire fixed. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll get that word out and uh, have somebody contact you. Yeah. So I'm waiting, and uh, about 15 minutes later, I uh, get a call. This is the automated OnStar service call center. You have uh, a service. It w should arrive in two hours. Oh, God. And now I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there going, I can't do two, two hours. So these guys are going at it with the flat tire. First of all, just getting... Remember when you used to just pop the trunk, mm -hmm. get your stupid chick chung chick chung chick chung chick chung jack out, and uh, the, the spare was right in your trunk, and you pulled everything out, and it was it was like it was no problem. Right now, the new vehicles have like everything is put in this place and screwed down, and it's like a puzzle. It's like a puzzle to get everything out, and uh, it, the jack handle is 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 shoved into the side well of the rear compartment. The spare tires up underneath the bottom, and has to be brought down with a cable and a little winch thing. And watching uh, Poe do this, trying to put the little rods together to make the handle longer, to stick in the hole that brings the thing down. And he had it kind of backwards and sideways. And the guy's full of heart. But I got to tell you, it was a little rough. And he lowered the, the spare tire down. And it's got one of those things through the middle hole of the spare tire where it's the shape that it has holds it in. Yeah. But you got to give it some slack, turn it sideways... And then bring it through the hole. Picture an old episode of what we were talking about the other day, the Three Stooges. What used to happen when they'd have to get a two-by-four in a doorway, and they're holding it lengthwise? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mo, it won't go in! <laughs> and they would cut big holes in the doorway? That was Poe trying to get the, the spare tire off. <laughs> oh, my God. So, and he's laying in the mud. We got pictures of it and the dirt. And, and uh, But but he he got it done. And the one thing that got me, though, is uh, he hand-tightened the lugs and then was ready to jack the car down <laughs> to tighten then tighten the lugs up. He's a strong fellow, though. But, I go, but, but I'm like, you know, I, everything I've ever done when I change a tire, you tighten it as much as you can while it's still jacked up without right. moving the jack. Right. Then you lower it down, and then you give it the... Good point. Because so you don't have a wobbly wheel. Oh, on the you way would have home. the most wobbly wheel. <laughs> wobbly wheel. I don't want wobbly wheel. <laughs> but it, that was just the beginning of a day that was just r long 
and full of crap. Should we start the music? More slow motion uh, hospital stuff. Why not? Let's start because the music for Anthony's it, uh, adventure. This is what happened to Anthony yesterday. The car pulling up and uh, the fly, the tire, flat tire. I got a flat tire. Poe comes out. He lays in the gutter in the dirt and changes the flat tire. I finally get the flat tire changed. Now I'm late to get to the hospital to pick up my girlfriend who just had her gallbladder out. And she's supposed to be discharged any minute. Actually, I had to drive back to the uh, hospital on Long Island to pick up my girlfriend from the hospital or else I'm not going to make it to D.C. I got to be here for a broadcast. I hop in the Escalade with the spare tire, drive all the way home first because now I'm full of grease from the spare tire. I got to wash up before I go to the hospital. I meet Keith the cop there at my house. We both go to the hospital because I had a couple of beers to calm myself down. <laughs> we go to the hospital. I go to get my chick out of the hospital. She's still in the hospital bed in her gown. I go, what's going on? She goes, they haven't discharged me yet. So I go to the front nurse and I go, what's the deal? When is she getting discharged? She goes, let me speak to the nurse. I go back to the room. The nurse comes in. She goes, I have the papers right here. They've been sitting here. Why haven't you given me the papers? They never even looked. She could have been out an hour earlier. But what the hell? She's got, I got the papers. We get her out. We go to the car, bring her home. Now we got to book a flight. Keith is yelling into the phone at one of the uh, shuttle places that take uh, from New York to Washington to uh, get us a plane. At, in the meantime, I'm running out to try to find my girlfriend, DeLauden. A medicine that is probably harder to get than black tar heroin. I went to eight different pharmacies. They didn't have it. They don't store it. They don't stock that's it. That's the same drug. It's that stronger than morphine. And that's the same drug your mom was on. My what? mother took it once. Sal took it once. My, when my mother took it, she went crazy and thought she was in a casino with men trying to have sex with her. And Sal thought he was in the Navy again. And uh, the laudan is very hard to get. So I drove all over the place. Finally had to go back to the hospital that I just discharged her from and ask, where can I get this stuff? Can I get it here? No, we don't dispense drugs. But we know a place in Queens. So I had to get back in my Escalade with the flat tire, that boat change, and drive all the way to Queens to get the DeLauden. Two hours later, I'm back to the house. Keith is still screaming into the phone trying to get our airline reservations. We finally get the airline reservations, and he books a car. The car pulls up at about 8.15, and we're still packing. Pack the car, pack the uh, bags, pack the car, and we're off to the airport. We get to the airport, check in, relatively easy. Melinda did not flush the DeLauden down the toilet because the cops were coming. <laughs> we made it that DeLauden! They would have found it! <laughs> we right, get you, on the shuttle. Alright, we're, we're on the Fly shuttle. To DC. Good, good, it's good. a 42-minute flight. Sure. Not bad at all. We land, we get to the hotel, we're starving. We order room service. By the time we finish room service, it's well after 12.30. The alarm goes off. Two seconds later, it's time to get up and come here. I get in the van, rush, Come here, and here we are sitting here now. Whew, Jesus. Day! That was a action-packed day. No kidding. Action-packed. <laughs> and you can't find this stuff? Like no. Dwayne Reed? The Lawton, the, no, no, Dwayne Reed, every store. <laughs> right aid, nothing? All of those stores, they go, no, we don't have this. No, why? Hmm. They want to make it perfectly clear they don't have that stuff because they don't want to be broken into it, to, you know, to, Stronger than morphine. And, well, people would break into a, a Dwayne Reed that carries that to get it. Yeah. Right? My so they'd rather not carry it. It, 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 it. I I had to go to some like drugstore that deals with hospitals. Like they, they 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 supply the hospitals with their drugs. Did you have to wait online for it when you got there? No, actually it was pretty cool because um I walked into the place and um I saw a guy in there talking to a woman behind the counter. And uh the guy uh gave me what I like to call the look. When you've been in this business long enough, you know what the look is. The look is, holy Jesus, that's Anthony from the Opie and Anthony show. And they can't hide it, no matter how cool they're trying to be. So I'm standing there, and I, I'm i seeing this all through peripheral vision. So he doesn't think I'm seeing it. So he, it's his sister or somebody that's behind the counter, and she works there. So he goes, all right, I'll see you later. Come here, come here, to her. So they walk over to the side now here. Then you always hear Opie and Anthony. You hear like the key phrase. And uh, then she, she uh, comes back over. And before she says word one, she walks behind the counter. I go, I've been in this business long enough to see the I know who that guy is look. I go, he did a horrible job. <laughs> <laughs> so she started laughing and uh, made it a lot easier and quick. 
I said, I got to catch a flight. I really got to get out of here fast. If there's anything you can do, she goes, I'll fill it right now. Oh, that's great. So she was very cool, very cool. Filled it. And, and uh, you wheelchaired your girlfriend. <laughs> Had to wheelchair my girlfriend. Through uh, an airport actually, onto a plane. Uh, actually, Keith. Because uh, I was hauling the uh, the bags that I had, the carry-on bags, yeah. and uh, Keith, with one hand, is pushing my chick through the airport in, in a wheelchair, because she's like, you know, doubled over in pain. We pretty much kidnapped her from the hospital <laughs> and threw her in an airplane. <laughs> the poor girl is in pain. She's been in uh, utter and complete pain, doing nothing but, but uh, you got a gallbladder out taking tests to make sure there's no leaking or, or anything wrong in there, because she was having such bad abdominal pains. Uh, and it's like, okay, you okay? All right, get on the jet. Get on the plane. <laughs> and we fly her down here and uh, throw her in a hotel room, and, and here we are doing the show. It's like uh, an airplane. She's hooked up to like an oxygen tent. <laughs> yeah, as a nurse uh, or a, uh, a nun singing songs to her, <laughs> pulling the IVs out. Well, well, there you have it. We're just getting started. 